Welcome, Welcome to a terrible football show. Hopefully you're having an absolutely phenomenal day. First off, guys, that was clean. Let me go ahead and just say that now. That was clean. We got to start to make that a normal thing. But hopefully you're having a phenomenal day today, whatever day you're listening to this podcast. Because just tuning into this show is just... Your day is going to get naturally just a little bit worse. It's just how it goes. We're a terrible football show. This episode 15, I'm Alex Light with Sparky3. I got both the boys in here. Tyler is back, and uh, he's finally decided to come in and maybe throw some hands. It's time. It's time to you know talk some shit. Bow you know, down, you, you've been you've been dodging. You've been scared, but now it's time to come in. Just we wait got, my moment, you know. We got Penn State. We got Arkansas going at it in the Outback Bowl. And it's time for you two to throw down. You know, well, he, well now he, everybody's opted out, so I can feel a little bit better about my pick. You know, I, I feel, could, couldn't be talking shit man, three weeks ago look, with all our players. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. you. You know, so Tyler originally wasn't sure if he was going to be on this episode either, just because of stuff. No, no big deal. And he sent me the picks, and he picked Arkansas. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil that. But man, I'm gonna be honest. I almost just wrote Penn State in for you. I feel like you got to go with Penn State because he's you got a diehard <laughs> Arkansas fan. You got you two have got to go against each other. I feel like that's just the natural way of things. We'll find out. I mean, I was ready. I was ready for pay per view like Jake Paul style. Man. Yeah, I, he he's been ready for weeks, man. He's been ready to throw hands, and you've been dodging him. Hey, Floyd Mayweather. That's all you got to worry. Uh, well, <laughs> I've been doing my Floyd money Mayweather. Man. <laughs> just been chilling. Well, we got a pretty loaded episode today because we honestly, this is going to be a very heavy, heavy pro football show today, uh, more so than college. We, 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 some weeks we're kind of more focused on college, some more focused on pro. It just depends, but shit, we, boys, we got a lot of stuff in the pro ranks to talk about. A few things in college. Uh, looking ahead, we're going to be looking at NFL Week 17. It's wild to think that we're literally two weeks left of the NFL season and it's done. That's wild to me. Um, then, of course, the third batch of bowl games. We still have some bowl games that are literally being played as we speak. Air Force is beating the shit out of Louisville as we speak. Unless it's changed. I haven't Naturally. looked. Naturally. I did pick Air Force on the bowl games. I just I looked. Did Naturally, yeah. I didn't pick them last week. Yeah, you didn't pick them for the, for the show. <laughs> you picked Louisville. Me and me and Shane picked you know Air Force, but it is what it is. Uh, going to be recapping how we did with the second batch of bowl meeting, which I only have a few of those, obviously. There are still games being played throughout the rest of the day, Wednesday and you know still Thursday, I believe, as well. Uh, FCS playoffs, that is going down this Saturday, I think. This Saturday or Friday? One of the two. I think it's Saturday. Are you sure? Usually they play them on Fridays. Okay, then it, it may, be, may be this Friday then is where we'll get to decide the, the championship there. Shane and I, we are tied for our FCS playoffs, so we did predict a score. We're going to see how that comes out. And Saturday at 11. Okay, Saturday at 11. Shout out Mary Harden Baylor because I – No one gives a shit. I couldn't get them in the last three weeks, but, you know. No one gives a shit. Mary Harden Baylor. <laughs> and, by the way, we will cut the music. Yeah, cut the music. <laughs> <laughs> cut the music. Can't nobody hear anything. <laughs> Damn it, boy. Uh, all right, first and foremost, if you could, go follow us on Twitter at TerribleFB Show. We'd appreciate that. As well as check out the other shows like Game Static, Anime Plus, and talk about movies and stuff. And lastly, if you want to support us for Patreon, is a great way to do so. Shout out to Andy, our Tier 1 Patreon. Uh, before we really jump into stuff, I know we all have some different things that we want to shout out here in the open mic. We'll start things off on uh, a little bit of a Debbie Downer note uh, because it is approaching the uh, one-year anniversary of a fallen comrade. Uh, in our previous fantasy leagues that we have done for many, many years now, there was always one man, a legendary man, who was part of our leagues, and he unfortunately passed away uh, about to be a year ago. Shout out to Larry Grissom, diehard Raiders fan. Uh, he, he came into fantasy just to be part of the group. You know, He's an older guy. He didn't really know a lot about fantasy, and this man drafted like three quarterbacks the first time we ever did fantasy, including drafting a quarterback round one. And for two years in a row, he managed to get the first overall pick and for two years in a row, he drafted Patrick Mahomes. Patty. Both times. So I have made it my mission that if I ever get the first overall pick, I am drafting Patrick Mahomes. I'm telling you that, boys, right now, yep. just in dedication of him. I told you that coming into this league, yep. that if I got it, I was drafting Patrick, even though I know it's a bad pick, <laughs> number one. I'm doing it in dedication to Larry. That's what Larry would do. Yeah, shout out to Larry, man. Uh, you know, he was a great dude. Sad to see him go. Uh, mainstay in our fantasy league. He got better every year. You yep. know, this the, his last year before he passed. Man, he had a really good fucking season. Yep, uh, he was rocking. And yeah. then he and he got he got a little bit of a losing streak there at the very end. He lost like four games in a row. But dude, this dude was like on undefeated streak almost the majority of the year. Oh yeah. So definitely shout out to Larry there, uh, boys. What else you guys got that you want to shout out? Um, I've got twenty four hour New Year stream. I was originally going to go to New York. Um, but it did get canceled because of COVID. Happens, um, yeah. Apparently, like, because um, I was supposed to go Thursday do my COVID test or whatever, mm -hmm. and apparently, like, first class gets their COVID test done early or whatever. 
Well, apparently there was like three or four positive tests, so they completely canceled the flight. Dang. They offered me uh, a new flight, but it was after New Year's. And I was particularly wanting to be there for New Year's. The whole reason why naturally. I wanted to be there. <laughs> yeah, naturally. <laughs> so I just took the refund, and um, now me and my buddy Josh, a, a.k.a. Iggy XX on Twitch, are going to do a co 24-hour stream starting at Friday, 11 p.m., um, and we're going to go continue until Saturday, 11.30 p.m. Um, so we'll be watching the Razorback game on stream, kind of. We'll be it'll be on stream, but the video won't be there because of yeah, course, naturally, you know, you know yeah, legal reasons. Um, but then we'll be playing all kinds of games, man. Uh, I may hook up my my PlayStation Four for the first time in two years and play some <laughs> Spider Man. I've got we've got DayZ Unlock. We've got a couple of new games that just uh, came out. We uh, it's like a it's like a PUBG. Um, superhero game called Super People. Mm-hmm. We've got we've got in tag. We got Daisy, Fortnite, Madden twenty two, and so it'll be football fourteen. We've got a whole lineup of games and willing to play whatever uh, you know people are willing to watch. Because originally I was willing to play Fortnite, but I was like, I'm not playing Fortnite for taking twenty four hours. Yeah, fuck that! I will <laughs> Hell, literally <laughs> drive me insane. <laughs> um. So yeah, we've got a, a big lineup to do, and we'll probably do a lot of just chatting as well. And uh, looking forward, looking forward to that. I'll definitely be tuning in for sure. Yeah. I got you. What about you, Tyler? What you got? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and bring this dude's name up on uh, Facebook. So, talking about games, if you like to just watch games, not necessarily play them. Like, I like to watch games more than I play them. So, he has uh, his name Chad Stewart, and he has a Facebook page called NCAA slash Pros All Sports Path to the Pros, which if the, on that thing you just send him your name, Send them your height information pretty much, and he'll just create you. And then you can watch your player, like, say he does good, say he does bad. Like, Shane towards like, his ACL, like, the third oh, game on, uh, oh. on ABA. So, oh, he no. was out for, like, most of the season. And then, uh, so, yeah, you pretty much just send him what you want. He'll create them. He'll even send you a picture of them and everything. And you just watch them grow up, basically, in front of you. You ain't even got to touch them or nothing. So he has a he has a Facebook that Path to Pros, then Discord is Stewart Sports League, and then he just created a Twitter named Stewart Sports League as well. So y'all can just go ahead and yeah, tell him a uh, terrible football show sent you, and he'll create you. And also, Tyler, uh, after the show, get me all those links. Everything that Tyler just went over, they will be linked down in the description below. So go so go also, show some support. Also, Alex, I got you in NHL. So oh, I mean, I'm same not, same with you, Shane. I, y'all are in the NHL on the Kings. Yeah. Maybe it's a it's a random game. Oh, okay random. Okay, it's, but it's fine. I did fine. give you it did give you like three teams to pick between. So okay. it, 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 it is, he does it. Let's say real real life. He'll he'll randomize the 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 number that you get in order to get drafted, mm-hmm. and then he'll draft you on a team. Okay. Spe- speaking of that, is it is it your pick yet on FIFA? No, they're on like thir- they're on the, they're on like thirty seven or thirty eight. And, bro, I'm, and it, I'm forty, bro. Bro, it's been on that for like a day or two. Right? No, now. four days. God. Oh no. <laughs> We've been doing this bro, draft for 60. four days, bro. I'm fucking 60, man. I don't pick like three people, though, because I did Javad, I did Matt, and then I feel like there was somebody else I did. Did you do Tony? That's no, right. Tony did his own. He got uh, Ronaldinho. So. Lucky ass. Alex over here, like, who the fuck is these dudes? Uh, that's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> That you're you're in a realm that I know literally zero about now. About damn time, man. About damn time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got me now. You got me. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some stuff. Uh, look at some previous week predictions. Uh, I went nine and seven in the NFL, bringing me to one forty five, ninety four and one. Uh, bowl games. I'm four and one so far. Like I said, the games are still set to be played. It bring me to eleven and six. Uh, you know, FCS playoffs still fourteen and eight. That game's gonna be played. We'll just, we'll look at that again next week. Uh, Tyler, you went eleven and five. You had a pretty good week in the NFL, bringing you to a one forty ninety nine and one. You're right there behind me. That random know? generator. Yeah, you're right there behind me, man. You're catching up, catching up. Shout out to the, shout out to you picking the lines. Uh, you were two and three in your bowl picks from last week so far, uh, bringing you to ten and seven. Um, Shane, you went six and ten in the NFL. Worst week yet, Damn. man. My first week yeah. not being at least five hundred. And your overall is now below five hundred by two, forty four and forty six. 
You'll, you'll get it back. You'll get it back. You are also two and three in the bowl game so far. I uh, bring you to a 10 and seven overall as well. Uh, our, okay. So far our, our spreads, uh, all of us, our college spreads are still pending because those games are being played <laughs> either today or tomorrow. So college is still pending for NFL. I went three and five, 16 and 12 overall. Tyler, you went three and five for the NFL as well. 14 and four, um, 14, 14 overall. How does that happen? Okay. I, I remember now. I remember now. Uh, and then Shane, you had a good week in the NFL six and two. Six and two, 15 and thir- 13 overall. You had a good week, man. I love that I get my spreads right, but I don't <laughs> pick the right games. Right. Like, hey, exactly it's two different worlds. And, and you know what? Shout out to the fact that uh, literally in two days, that voting will take place for the state of Arkansas to see if the, the mobile sports betting is going to happen. So yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, if that if, if that gets approved, I see no reason why it shouldn't. Because the betting that they already introduced, where it's like set in the, like, what, the three different locations you can go to, has already brought in a shit ton of money as is. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to it's gonna get passed, and that's going to bring in a whole new dynamic. Oh, man. Tyler, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm scared for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared for you, buddy. I'm doing pretty decent at something. All right, let's go ahead and jump I don't know into what it. It is. Uh, let, we'll start off with college. We don't have a whole lot of college chats right now. Uh, this is a very heavy pro focus show today. We got a lot of pro shit. Let's go ahead and start things off with Penn State and Arkansas, boys. How you guys feeling about the game? We got a diehard Penn State fan, diehard Arkansas fan. How you guys feeling about the bowl game? You know, I, I always have hope for Arkansas. Like even going into like Alabama games, I'm like. Maybe we can win this year, you know, but that, I think that, that fights for every Arkansas fan. Win the fan. spread, that's all that matters. I think that, yeah, <laughs> I think that fights for every Arkansas fan, really, like, especially, like, when we're good, we're, like, way overconfident. But I uh, I actually lost a little hope yesterday or the day before because my dad is usually the same way. I was like, Dad, you ready for the for the bowl game on Saturday? He's like, wow, we're going to get our ass beat. Oh, no. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, Penn State's really good. And I was like, uh, you know, they're all right. <laughs> they're all right. They are. Let's, let's pump the brakes on the really good part. And then I was like, started naming off like all the players. I was like, well, this play, they have this player opting out and this player opting out and this player opting out. You know, they have like nine starters opting out out of the 22, I think, as of yesterday that I looked. Um, we both have our top receiver out. They have two linebackers out, a a safety, a corner, and defensive lineman. Like, they have all these people out. Is Clifford opting out or is he playing? No, he's playing. He's coming back. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's helping Drew Alar. No, that's right. First time y'all heard about that name. Um, Isn't that the, 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 like the number Ohio. four? Yeah, yeah, it's a recruit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty solid. I, I, I mean, I watched, <laughs> I've watched. i been watching that podcast from Penn State just yeah. to get like, their side of things. Yeah. And they're heavy into recruiting. They had him on the show like two weeks, three weeks ago yeah. or whatever. So They um, had him on a couple times. They also had Trey Biddy on. And yeah. then now Arkansas got due from Penn State on. So Yeah, I've been watching them. Um, but I think, I mean, it, it's going to be in my spreads. I'll, I'll leak this now. But um, Penn State – you know, it started off when the game was announced that it was Penn State was like a four or five point favorite, mm-hmm. and it's flipped. Arkansas is now a one, one and a half, two point favorite right now. So I mean, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good game. Unfortunately, myself, I haven't watched a lot of Penn State. Only game I've watched Penn State was when they lost to Illinois. Naturally. So, um, other than that, I haven't really watched a lot of Penn State. I know they're always a good team, especially in the last you know four or five years, but. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm ready to see what our offense is going to look like towards that depleted defense. Mm-hmm. Um, so it should be a good game. What about you, Tyler? How are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm on a fence. I can with the amount and of I, players you have opt out. I can understand why. But the the good news is we got Clifford. Yeah, and we ain't got that Robinson guy to back him up. Shout out to him going to UConn. Yeah, we got the kid from uh from Canada who put it put it on uh, Maryland. Mm-hmm. Earlier in the year, so villain, villain, no villain, the way I don't know. Christian, Christian V. That's all I know. Okay, can't say his last name. It doesn't matter. Drew Lars coming to take a spot. So yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a good game. That's that. I think that's at the least what you're going to be asking for. It's just a good game. See, I want it to be a good game, but then again, <laughs> just. Just so I have bragging rights, yep. I want to see Arkansas put 40 on y'all and we win by 20. You want to see them beat the shit out of them? I want <laughs> us to pummel the shit out of y'all. <laughs> see, we don't get blown out, though. That's the thing. We're going to fight until Clifford can't, pretty much. It just all depends on Clifford. Because, honestly, I mean, uh, again, I'm not really familiar with – I mean, I, 
y'all have played CJ Stroud, but I'm ready to see what y'all what y'all do against KJ. Which CJ is not really a running quarterback that I've seen. Right. I'm ready to see what y'all y'all think of six five two forty five running downhill. Hey, how about this? Wanting to put a lick on somebody. Okay. How about this? Let, let's let's look at a little stats. Numbers never lie. Remember that. Okay. So, y'all second leading receiver. Which is now y'all's first leading receiver. Yeah, it's probably going to be Warren Thompson. No. It's going to be – who is t- – uh, Tyson Morris. Tyson Morris, number 19. Yes, number 19. Senior. 21 catches, 305 yards. Yeah. And, and, and then Thompson's behind him, 18 for 292. Yeah, and I think uh, – And I think um, and then Warren's third. What, what's Traylon? I bet Traylon's like like forty catches. I know he's got over a thousand year yards. You said Traylon with forty catches? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna guess forty catches. Sixty six. Sixty six catches and with I know Wait, he's hold like hold up. Wait, hold up. I know he's like a thousand one hundred yards, something like that. Yeah. Eleven one, eleven touchdowns. Yeah. So that's, I mean that's y'all's but, receiving core. But also what do you what is y'all's receiving core? Because y'all's top receiver had more yards and more catches than than Traylon did. Isn't he like okay. projected first round? Both of them are. Yeah, I know Tra- Burks. They're is, like but. they're like second and third, third and okay. fourth somewhere around there. Gotcha. So ours is a little different because Clifford be throwing that ball. So our second receiver, which is now our number one receiver, was that a shot at KJ? Oh, definitely. No, nah, KJ is a, he's the next Cam Newton dog. So feels like a shot. Thanks. Not, not no shot. He's a, he feels like a shot. High, but but he's we going to win the Heisman. But, but honestly, we are more of a even though we run a veer and shoot more of a spread offense. We are more running based. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we run the ball pretty decent. But uh, so our leading receiver now is Parker Washington, fifty seven, seven hundred twenty two yards, four tutties. And God. then we got our second guy is Keandre Lambert Smith with thirty one four forty seven. Two touchdowns. So basically, your next two guys blow up our next two. <laughs> and then, water. and then our tight end, <coughs> Brenton Strange. Excuse me, is nineteen catches, two twenty six, and three touchdowns. And our other tight end is nineteen, two thirteen, and one. So pretty much, we're going to be slinging the ball around. But we have three running backs on a quarterback that have cl- that have either close to or over five hundred yards rushing. <laughs> let's look at let's so look, look at stats real quick. God damn, y'all y'all do. Yeah, y'all going to run the fucking ball. I can tell you that. And we suck at running the ball. And I think Dominique's <laughs> like three yards away. I think he's at like 495 or something like that for the season. So it, that'll push us over four or five guys with 500 yards rushing on the year. Yep. And uh, we uh, we give up 135 rushing yards a game and 208. Y'all average 223 and 217. So y'all going to run the ball. And we're going to be like, there you go. Yep. Because we put we put we put three fifty on Texas. <laughs> See, we we don't run the ball. We we only run about one hundred six yards a game with two seventy five passing. So you but, know what we're going to do. But you know what our weak point is. Well, our weak point is our fucking secondary right now. I mean, fucking yeah. Alabama put five sixty on us. That's true. Yeah. So we'll. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a good game. So I'm looking forward. It's, it's it. going to sound like it's going to be just like an <laughs> offensive battle. See, y'all are going to score, and we're just going to be like, damn, how are we going to score though? Because <laughs> I I don't know how we're going to score against y'all. That's the only reason why I'm like mm, maybe Arkansas. It was like it was the same thing with like Illinois and and like Michigan. I'm like, dude, there's no fucking way we're going to score on this team. Like we got to have a defensive game. This ain't fucking Rutgers in Maryland. <laughs> like you know, Arkansas is not Rutgers in Maryland. Okay, y'all are. Uh, I'm not gonna say Iowa, but y'all are kind of like Iowa. Y'all can be good, but y'all got too many people ahead of y'all to be good. Yeah, you know, Michigan, yeah. Ohio State, Alabama, and true, whoever is the second Alabama team, <laughs> right? Well, at least both you guys' teams is actually going to play in the bowl game. Miami opted out. Hey, we we still got a couple of days, you know. And you see, like literally, like a day after, like all, like the fun, like the last couple rounds of op outs, the CDC lowered the yep. the recommendations <laughs> of ten to five days. Yep, hey, that's a hell of a thing for uh, Hawaii and Memphis, though. Oh, Memphis over there getting a vacation and everything. I know, man. And then the day of, they're like, oh, we're not gonna play. Have you, right, did you guys see Easy Post uh, trolling that? Maybe. Okay, so Easy Post, they didn't even have a Twitter before this. They literally <laughs> made a Twitter to just troll on this game. 
and that's all they've done is they 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 trolled on the game where there was like a guy at the stadium. It's like empty. It's like oh man, what a game! It's zero zero so far in the in the third quarter. It's like oh, this is intense. And then in the, in the fourth quarter, they actually had like the Memphis like punter or something like just punt the ball through the field goal. It's like three points for Memphis. Memphis wins. Damn, <laughs> Easy post is grinding, bro. They're, 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 they said their goal is to be the best bowl game uh, Twitter. And then Dukes Mayo stepped into the plate and said, hey, you have to get past us first. Because yeah. shout out to Dukes Mayo. That Twitter is hilarious. Did it you guys is. see about the uh, about the Mayo bath? Yeah. I didn't see the coach it, talk it, about it. it. Yeah, it, both coaches talked about it. He said he don't like mayonnaise, but. He'll do it for the team. And, and then Mac Brown's like, yo, I'll let you hit me with a frying pan if we <laughs> win. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to win. Hell yeah. But no, dude, a lot of bowls being canceled. Teams opting out. Both my top teams have opted out. Hawaii Natural, and, and Miami. Yeah, just the fucking how it goes. We've had a few different bowl games canceled. Like I know Fenway, I got can- canceled. Yep. That was what, SMU in Virginia, right? And then uh, Barstool Sports got canceled. Arizona. Yeah, that, yeah, okay, so that one got canceled because one of the teams opted out, and then uh, uh, Central Michigan that was still in it, they got shifted over to the Sun Bowl where yep. they were replacing Miami. So Arizona's just now canceled. Uh, <laughs> there are some other games that was flat out canceled as well. Let me actually just pull it up. I know where, there where the teams weren't going somewhere else. Yeah. I know there was another game. Is the Washington State game they got? Yeah, that like, was with uh, that was with Miami, Miami. and now now they're playing Central Michigan, so that one still go. So other games got canceled was uh, Boston College and ECU with the Military Bowl. I think it was Boston. No, maybe an ECU that was that had all the problems. Yeah, and then Boston College is like, no, nah, fuck it, our season's done. And also, when it comes to that, someone I don't remember who it was. Someone tweeted out like Boston College is like last five years of bowl games, and dude, it's it's like. What a fucking joke. Like, out of the last five years of them being selected for a bowl game, they've only played one bowl game and lost. <laughs> Every other game got canceled for one reason or another. Uh, and then Holiday Bowl, that just got canceled literally today. Uh, UCLA and uh, NC State. Oh, really? Literally on his way that. over, he, he yep. messaged me, just UCLA. And I'm I like, see that. Damn. fucking UCLA is yeah. what I said. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, dude, it's it's. Ha- I'm wondering how many more games are going to get canceled. Imagine if shit. Imagine if something would happen to one of the college football playoff teams. Well, now that you can be the champion, yeah, if it happens. So man, what a what a wild time that we live in right now. Since he can win the Natty, uh, since- I, 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 yeah, but I say it, I was about to say if it does happen, it's going to happen to like Georgia, right? Because um, ain't no way COVID's going to hit Alabama. Not with Nick Saban there. That's okay. That's fair. <laughs> no way, no. And Nick even then, pay his way out. He and, don't care. And, and even then, you got to think if it hits starters, like their third and fourth string, their practice team can start on some D one. Hey, look schools. at Mac Jones. He was a practice squad. Yeah, <laughs> the I whole mean, fucking quarterback room in Alabama. That'd be like, I right, ain't running. Back. I mean, <laughs> Alabama could literally divide up and play two teams at once. Yeah, they like, they're, <laughs> they'd be fine. Oh. You talk about two teams. They got a team to play everybody. They don't care. They'll play Michigan, Georgia, and yeah. Cincinnati all at the same time. Okay. No, I'm. Uh, what, I'm assuming you guys are just both, both naturally. Uh, okay, let me ask you this: Besides you guys' bowl game, what game are you excited for the most that's coming up right now? Is it going to be one of the college football well, games or one something else? Unfortunately, it was UCLA NC State, but now I can. Unfortunately for me, was Pitt and Michigan State. But I was looking forward to seeing Kenny Pickett and Kenneth Walker. You know, I, but they both opted out. So that, I, that I was know. mine too. But honestly, now I'm invested into the shit show of Oregon and Oklahoma. That is going to be a shit show, so I can understand your investment. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, I, I'm in, I like uh, Wake Forest and Rutgers just to whoop yeah, the dog yeah. shit out of Rutgers. True. But uh, <laughs> not like uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, bring that rivalry back. I like it. I like to watch them. That is true. Yeah, they used to true. play the first game of the season like for like – five, six years in a row. I mean, honestly, that would be better than, Clem- than Clemson, South Carolina. <laughs> shit. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt Carroll has an opt-out, right? Like, he hasn't said no, he's going he, to the he draft. He opted back in. Yeah, he okay. opted to play the game. Yeah. Okay, so solid. Baylor and Ole Miss. That's, bowl? that's solid. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 I think that's going to be actually pretty cool. solid, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel – I look – okay, I acknowledge it's probably going to be a complete fucking smash fest. But Utah, I am – Ohio? No. no. Okay. <laughs> but I am I am going to low-key be excited for Cincinnati and Alabama – just because I've <laughs> been supporting Cincinnati, but I know it's going to be a smash fest. I just hope it won't. I just don't be a smash fest is all I ask for. But the, I know it will. The thing, the thing I'm looking forward to is the what if. What if Cincinnati comes out there and fucking wins? I know. You know man. what? You know what happened? Uh, ESPN. Uh, Cincinnati got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing they're like. Uh, Nick Saban? No, this ain't Nick Saban. Yeah, like, Kobe's going to run wild as soon as Bama loses. Man. Like, Bama, 
Bama will get so much shit to losing to the very first group of five teams that ever hit the playoff. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Cincinnati definitely deserves to be that first yeah, team. True. They're definitely the best out of the group group of fives. That's been kind of questioned oh, over boy. the years. If they had the, if they had the playoffs back on Boise, Boise would have won that bitch with Ian Johnson and uh, Kellen, Z- uh, Jared, uh, Jared Z- uh, Zambisky, whatever his name Zambisky. is. Zambisky. Yeah, he was he was on the cover in NCAA eight. Zambrowski yeah. or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Zambanski, whatever. I don't that know. team was pretty. That team was pretty. Solid. That team was good. Yeah. Is that yeah. the team that like didn't lose for Statue like three? Of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty yeah. play yeah. against they, Oklahoma. They didn't yep. lose for like three years in a, no. like three years. Yeah, it was a good fucking team. Yeah, I they, would agree. They were up there. But I mean, you got to think. Wait, what year was that? Let's check the win- let's check the Natty on that one. It that was a, that would have been it would have uh, been Bama. Two thousand eight. It would have been seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. Well. Well, about, okay. let's just say Boise, it Statue of Liberty. The, the, the last year would have been 2007 because when Jared got on the cover on NCAA 08, which came out in 07, that was his senior year. Okay, yeah, so, so 2007. Been, so it would have been five, six, and seven. College football. Yeah. Man, what a wild time. I, now, I, I, you started to mention him. The time with Kellen, that would, probably would have been a pretty legitimate contender as well. Kellen yeah, Moore is one had, of the best passers in college had, history. Because they also had Jay Ajayi during that time, didn't they? Yeah, they did. So, I mean, that was a good-ass team too. Yeah. But even then, like – you got to think of what Bama was back then. They were even more of a dominant team back then than they were now. LSU, Ohio State. Yeah, probably, oh, that game. Probably not. Probably that not would have won. That game, I remember. Because the next year was Florida and uh, Oklahoma, I think, mm-hmm. with uh, Tim Tebow yep. running the fucking show over there. And Sam Bradford just getting shut the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Naturally. 2007, um, that year, Darren McFadden should have won the Heisman. Just saying. Tebow won that. That was the year before. Is uh, Troy, Troy Smith. Smith. Darren McFadden should have 100% won at the year of Troy. 100%. That was <laughs> the, the year straight was, rigged. Yeah, 100%. The year Tebow versus McFadden. I see both points. I see both sides. They're both deserving. But the one where he lost out to Troy, that's bullshit. That should have been Darren. Yep. <laughs> that should have been Darren. The Tebow won, one, yeah, that's tough. They were both very dynamic. But uh, Troy won. That, that's a load of bullshit. That's a load of bullshit. Nope. Uh, let's hop over to pro. Where do we want to start, guys? Like, dude, there's so much to kind of just talk about and digest. Uh, let's talk about Kellen Moore. Well, okay. What about Kellen to Jacksonville? Yeah, well, we'll start there. We'll start with the Jags, Quarterback man. to quarterback. Yep, you know? yep. Uh, so, coaching for the Jags right now. Well, first, let's start with the GM. Trent, um, he is going to be retained. Uh, he was the GM for the 49ers during their Super Bowl run. Uh, but he's also being credited as, like, a really shitty GM. Yep. He was kind of the reason why Jim said, fuck this, I'm out. Uh, so, it's kind of like a lot of a lot of Jags fans are pretty pissed off about him being retained. and Everyone just still pointing at Shot Khan being a useless owner, which he is, 100%. Shot is a fucking idiot. Um, but the for the coaching for the Jags are now, there are two names that are rumored that have not been brought up for official interviews, which is Doug Peterson and Jim Caldwell, which that would be really solid. interesting. That would be very solid. Now, official interview requests have been put in for Byron Lefwich, Kellen Moore, Dan Quinn, Todd Boyles. Um, Bowles. Bowls, thank you. The, those official interview requests have been put in, which I think all I think literally every single name here I think are good candidates for yeah. this team. Yeah. How do how do you boys feel about it? What do you think is the best candidate for this team potentially? Honestly, the two honestly Kellen Moore and Byron Leftwich kind of give me iffies because I feel Just how like, newer they are, how newer they are, yeah. and honestly, I feel like they are products of where they are. If that makes sense, because. Mm-hmm. Kellen Moore got brought on as an assistant to Dallas when Ga- when Garrett was there, and then just kind of followed Garrett's footsteps and just happened to have great players, right? Right, and then kind of same way with Byron Leftwich, he got brought in as an assistant, got the job, and then just happened to have Tom Brady, know, one of the most annoying <laughs> rosters that we've ever seen in the NFL. True, like when, looks like it was made like, Madden, it's literally for real. So it's like kind of iffy on that. And plus, like, honestly, what kind of coaching, um, like, other than what they're doing right now, what kind of other coaching have they done? I mean. Coaching on the field as quarterbacks. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> Leftwich was a little bit more successful, in my opinion, than what Moore was, but they both well, weren't very successful. Yeah, I think Moore, if he was going to be a coach, he needs to go to college first. So, you know, it's kind of iffy there. Now, the Dan Quinn, eh. You know, he was good as a DC, wasn't that good as a head coach. He had a, like what, two good years yeah. with Atlanta, one of course going to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. and then it just kind of fell apart. 
Um, but honestly, my top out of those four, n- n- not counting Doug Peterson or Jim Caldwell, would have to be Todd Bowles. Yeah. Because he's been proven. But do you want a defensive coach to – See, that's the big question. Because like, I would want an offensive guy with that with the I, new quarterback. I would know? too. And that's the, that's the big problem because it's like I'm with you on like the inexperience of Byron and, and Kellen. Like it's one of those things where it's iffy, but I'm not going to necessarily avoid it because we've seen the likes yeah. of like – you know, uh, Sean McVay, you know, Matt LaFleur, who, which Matt, let's be honest, Matt LaFleur came out of fucking nowhere. That Tennessee offense that he ran was average as fuck, and he got the job. Now, granted, I'm not going to give him all the credit in the world because he's got Aaron Rodgers, but still, you know, Zach Taylor has finally started to kind of figure his way out through the thing uh, up in Cincy. But, uh, you know, so I'm not going to completely look away from Byron and Kellen, uh, but it is going to be something to kind of look at. Now, when it comes to Dan and Todd, I'm with you on Todd. But it still comes back to the point where it's like, do I want that defensive-minded guy? Yeah. I feel like out of all these candidates, honestly, just give me Doug Peterson or give me Jim Caldwell. Yeah, I'll take Jim. Yeah, I would take one of those two. In fact, you know what? I would just I would take Doug Peterson. I would. Yeah. Um, Jim Caldwell being my second, if that ends up being legit. But let's say out of these ones that are officially requested, that's where it's tough. I don't know. There's a part of me that wants to just say. <laughs> the only thing that would intrigue me about Doug Peterson is that he did win a Super Bowl yeah. with the Eagles. He did kind of coach up Nick Foles to a point. He did kind of have Carson Wentz into a, I mean, a nearly MVP kind of season before he got hurt. So that does intrigue you with a with a brand new quarterback um, or, you know, with Lawrence and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, again, you're like – Okay, you really had a year, year and a half of good play, and then what happened? What happened? Yeah, which I know one thing that happened is just like consistent injuries for Carson. Because let's be honest, Carson was going to win the MVP that year before he got hurt. Let's be, let's go ahead and be real. He was like he was the MVP candidate until he got hurt, and then ever since he got hurt, it's all been downhill for Carson consistently. Got Uh, COVID. Yeah, 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 he is. Dunzo. He, yeah, he is. He is. He is on the COVID list now, as of today. Has he always had the the tattoo sleeve? I think no. so. I think so. No, it looks I think, I, to I, me it looks new, but it I might think, just I because think he's, he's recently got. Because I know he didn't have it in Philly, and I don't I know damn well he didn't have it in North Dakota State. Well, I know he's always worn an arm sleeve, so he might have had it. I don't know because that that looks sick. I like it. He might he might have had it. I have no idea because he's always worn an arm sleeve. Yeah, so I don't know. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how the stuff play out with the Jags. Um, honestly, like I said, for me personally, if if these two rumored ones is true, give me Doug Peterson. But if they're not true, uh, that's where it's tough. I don't know. If I had to pick one of the offensive guys, I'd probably pick Byron Leftwich. Um, if so I pick you the want defensive, a homecoming, I want a homecoming. That is homecoming. literally the only reason I want a homecoming. You don't want a young quarterback to help your young quarterback. Well, Kellen, Kellen would be a decent option. you got to keep in mind, you know, while Kellen did not have any success in the NFL, because ultimately what it came down to for Kellen is he just didn't have a strong arm. That's lefty. literally what it, it was. He was a lefty. He a lefty with a weak arm. But he is one of the best quarterbacks yeah. in college history. I mean, he is. Yeah. Go look at the stats. He's one of them. I think he still holds one of the records for, like, what, like completion percentage? Something like that, yeah. I mean, he, he he's one of the best quarterbacks we've seen yeah. in college history. So, I mean, Kellen it would probably be the better pick, but I got that little homecoming fandom that I want. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but if not, Todd Boyles. Todd Boyles for sure. Well, see, yeah, the thing is, like, you know, you worry about defensive-minded head coach. <clears throat> very easily bring in a very good offensive coordinator yeah. to, to settle that. Yeah, I mean, you could, yeah. you could snag Brian Lef- Byron Leftwich, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know how that would work out. Why would le- you want to go from a Super Bowl champions? Because it's hometown. I don't well, know, it's where he's no, drafted. Know yeah. your role, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the, what about the Giants? Uh, they've uh, recently there's in rumors and reports coming out that they're retaining Judge and keeping Daniel Jones going in next year. Thank God. What that tells me is that tells me their their thoughts on quarterback free agency and the draft next year. Because I mean we yep. we've talked about how there's no number one guy in terms of the quarterbacks, and we, while we like Kenny Pickett, while we like Matt Corral, it is true there's not a true number one stud. So I feel like them wanting to actually keep Jones to me just indicates like their thoughts on this upcoming draft and where they're gonna put, like who could they potentially upgrade from is kind of the way I look at it. Dude, I was hearing a lot about trying to trade one of the picks or both of the picks for Sean Payton. Or Russell Wilson. Now, see, I've heard those same things with the Bears. I've heard a lot of yep. Bears rumors trying yep. to trade for Sean Payton, and I'm down for that. Let's do it. Whatever Damn. we got to do. Well, y'all ain't got a first round pick because. I, well, I know. <laughs> Whatever we got to do to make it work. So, all right, then, Justin Fields, go ahead, go down there. We'll take your coach. 
reboot this whole system. Oh, Justin, Justin would not be part of the package. We'd probably have to get rid of like a Khalil Mack. Um, and then one of y'all seven quarterbacks you got there. Um, yeah, maybe like Andy. It, like if to make that trade happen for the Bears, we'd have to get rid of next year's first round pick that yep. we have. Probably Khalil Mack. Probably like Andy Dalton. Probably Roquan Smith because he's a young stud. Um, and maybe like uh, either Allen Robinson or Eddie Jackson, Dude, something like that. New Orleans would be fucking set if you got Demario Davis. I know. If you got, <laughs> if you got Khalil Mack, if you got uh, Roquan Smith, Roquan like, Smith, that cat from yep. UTSA. Uh, <laughs> damn, he was a first round pick a couple years ago. I can't remember his name. I know who you're talking about. I'm yeah, drawing yeah. a blank on the name, though. Yeah. Dude, that defense be fucking soft. <laughs> They'll be like, I right, think Ian Book, go ahead and win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Ian Book ain't going to win shit. He's going to get his dub next week. He ain't going to get a damn dub. He, no, probably, he probably ain't playing next week, is he? You know, I saw this thing. Uh, I was going to send Maybe. it, I was gonna send it to, to group chat, but I forgot. Notre Dame quarterbacks are 0-27 in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You gotta know you. you gotta know your role. Zero and twenty-seven, okay. bro. How many Bama quarterbacks succeed in the NFL? They're on the rise. Ohio quarterbacks succeed in the hey, NFL. Hey, we're working on it in Chicago. Okay, we're gonna figure it out. Hopefully, <laughs> see, see I, I think him more Georgia than Ohio. But and yeah. see, the thing is also what what's what's intriguing about this though. Justin Fields is I think has got still got great potential. I think that coaching staff is completely fucking him over. Yep. yep. Same way with Facts. um same way with um we were just talking about him. I forgot his Trevor. No. Anyways, what I what team? I, I'll f I will do not God no. damn. I don't know. I'll f- I'll Danny find Dimes. It. Danny Dimes. Okay. God there we go. Boy. It took me a minute. Uh <laughs> Daniel Jones. Again, <laughs> I've seen enough glimpses. Yeah. For potential, yeah, it's just Joe Judge and uh, and Garrett have completely fucked him over. Yeah, um, so Barkley being out definitely doesn't help him. Not. Oh yeah, most definitely. I will say, while I can understand keeping Jones, I don't understand keeping Judge. And I will, and I'm, there hasn't been any talk about this yet. But if they keep Gettleman, I'll also be very shocked on that. I think they chose these two over Gettleman to. To let Gettleman know, hey, bro, you are the fucking problem here. Right. You Which I, I could agree. Gettleman is a fucking terrible GM for but the Giants. Like I said before, Judge and Jones are a package deal. Yeah. You get rid of one, you get rid of both. Because what, what coach wants to come in and take over a quote-unquote bust? You know? That's fair. They're but not going to come in. They're going to knock down fair. your door. That's fair. You know? That's they, fair. They're I, probably going to give them one more year, and they're going to be like, you know what? Clean the fucking house. Maybe yep. keep Barkley. Maybe not. You know? Barkley no, needs to get the fuck I think, out. I think yeah. Barkley will be smart enough to get the fuck out of there. Buffalo, come on. They uh, need to run yeah. back. Imagine him going to Buffalo. How that, ecstatic would you be? That would Dude. be great. I, I would officially hop on the Buffalo Bills bandwagon. I love me some Saquon Barkley. Right. He's I would buy great. a fucking jersey as soon as he signs. I would create a fucking jersey just before he even picks a number. No, I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> <'Cause, laughs> yeah, let's, let's pump the brakes. Because uh, Singletary is 26, and that's what it, that's what Barkley wears. You know? Well, I mean, I mean, a lot of these players will, will, I mean, buy out the jersey, buy out the jersey number. Sometimes they don't, though. I mean, it's Barkley. I mean, sometimes if they Singletary play, would be like, "Dog, you ain't even played for three years. Come on, now. <laughs> <laughs> like, how you gonna take my jersey? <laughs> like, what the fuck, bro? Well, talking about Buffalo, are they back? Are they all the way back? How how you feeling about your team right now? Pretty good win against New England. I you mean, want, you uh, want to let me know? You want me to tell you something real quick? Tell me something real quick. New England yeah. in the snow. Them motherfuckers ran seventy eight times and passed the ball three times. One was just a a fuck up pass. Okay, right, right. The wind was fucking ridiculous. True, bro. The dude couldn't even kick ten yards before it. Yep. went to the stands. Okay. That was a wild ass game to watch. That game. Pissed me off from from the moment it started to the moment it ended. Okay, that's a <coughs> that's a damn New England. We just rem, we just remembered the whole last twenty years. Yep. And then we got to follow it up with fuck the guy that the guy that ruined our franchise for twenty plus years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then who do we play after that? Was it back to New England? Back to New England, it? I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we got our revenge, and we said, "Fuck y'all, we're back." And then now we got two cupcakes left. We'll see. Fuck you, Jeremy. We're about to blow y'all's ass out by like 50. <laughs> okay. We're about to just destroy the next two teams, which is. 
I think, Atlanta and the Jets. I, I think, think if y'all come in and destroy Atlanta and destroy <laughs> the Jets, I'll be on the Bills comeback. But until then, y'all have what five bad weeks to one good week. I don't understand. Our bad weeks over shadow our good weeks like that's the problem that's the bad thing i like, mean you guys lost to jacksonville when we're bad like nine to six when we're bad <laughs> y'all are bad when we're bad we are bad but when we're good we're fucking unstoppable yeah you're top three team the only thing is if we play indianapolis in the uh in the wild card we're fucked oh for sure because we we still have not <clears throat> we still have not found out our run defense because fucking Damon Harris went off for like what one fifty and two touchdowns mm-hmm. against us, but we just can't we can't fucking stop it. Ed Oliver needs to get his shit together. Yeah, he needs to stop riding that damn horse like he did last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, no, I me, don't know why that popped up in my head as soon as you said Ed. No, we were talking about uh, real quick talking about you know they need a running back. We're talking about Saquon. Me and uh, Alex here talked about it maybe last week or two weeks ago. Um, he we were talking about mate, what. What is somebody that the Bills would be looking at as far as free agency or draft when it comes to running backs? And I was thinking, well, maybe like a Kenneth Walker could yeah. fall to y'all. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you think about that? That would be pretty That would be pretty solid. Uh, let me look at the running backs. Yeah, I was about to bit. say, like, let's look at other running backs to the class. The NFL draft running backs. Uh, while, you, while you're doing that, um, Dallas also had a dominant game. You know, beat the fuck out of Washington. I think all I three of us not, picked uh, the, the plus ten and a half. Because we thought Washington would at least keep it closer or whatever. But, yeah. oh, my God, 56 to 14? I actually I actually picked Washington to win that game. Yeah, you did. They were, they were riding high. They were on, like, a four or five game win Jesus. streak. Jesus. They were... They were playing really well. What does that game tell you, though? Does that game tell you that Washington stinks, or is, is Dallas that good, or what? I, I think it is. I think it is kind of. I, I think Washington is as good as we've seen them, but I think it gives more props to Dallas because we see when they have things clicking, when they have things going, they're they, rocking. They are a top team in the NFL, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's hard to stop them because you do have the run game of Pollard and Ezekiel, and then you mm-hmm. have. Dak Prescott, who is easily a top f- five, top three quarterback. And then you've also got all these weapons at receiver. And then uh, Schultz. Is it Schultz? Is I, think tight end? I think that's a tight end. Yeah. Dalton Schultz, fuck that dude. He lost me in fantasy. Yeah. He, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's showing to be maybe a, another good tight end coming out of Dallas, which they've kind of been known with, with yeah, Jason yeah. Witt and everybody. That offense is powerful. And then you've got uh, on the defensive side, you know, is – one of the best fucking defensive rookies we've seen in fucking history. Yeah. So, I mean, they're definitely a top team, but the thing is the consistency. Just like the Bills, they're, they're good as top three. They're bad as really bad. Right. So. Man, I don't know. Um, Dallas is Dallas has always been like a weird team like that because like I feel like when Dallas is has those teams, like that's how it goes. They're really fucking good, but when they're bad, they're bad. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how they, they fare coming in the playoffs here soon because at this point they're fucking locked in for the NFC East. I mean, I think they can win the – did they officially win the NFC East or can they win yeah, this? Yeah, no, they officially won yeah, it officially. with um, – they won it before they even played because uh, yeah, some team I, lost. Yeah, I saw like uh, Adam Schefter and I think Ian was tweeting about it as yeah. well. Uh, what do we got going on for those backs in the, in the draft? So, yeah, uh, Buffalo, they need to get a superstar running back. Like, you can't keep getting these – Singletary's and Zach Moss, Moss, Zach Moss yeah. like yeah. these role guys. You yeah. need like a dominant running back. So I say like Kenneth Walker, or Brees Hall, but I would be, I'll be very impressed if they go get Pierre Strong from South Dakota State, mm. like the fourth, fifth round. Mm. He's from uh, that'd be a great value pick. He's yeah, from uh, McClellan, Little Rock. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I don't know if I have mentioned that before. No. Nope. Yeah. He's never uh, been mentioned. Unfortunate. I feel like I've tried to bring it up, but I just kept forgetting. Well, I, I've known just because, um, you know, once I started the show, I started, you know, I knew that we were dabbling into FCS. Yeah. So I kind of researched all this stuff, and I, I found out yeah. about it. I, I forgot about it, but, yeah. he Shout out to the one person doing research. Yeah, I know, right? Shout out to you. Appreciate you. I'm trying to make it a little less terrible <laughs> show. That's what we're going to start calling it, a little less terrible football show. Um, But, yeah, it's... It, that'd be a great value pick. Mike, check, Mike, check. I feel like it's working. Are you good? 
Did you unplug it? it? No, you're I don't good. Know. Uh, mate, I'll hold up. <laughs> Did you unplug okay, it again? Good. I don't know, dude. Did <laughs> no. I unplug it? <laughs> when when it when it zooms out, it's because you're you're talking like this. Yeah, you're like, no, getting like over here. Hey, podcast yeah. one hundred and one always yeah. always no. talking to the mic. Yeah. This over damn here. light is stressing me. Just out. turn it off. Just Bro, pull the cord up. I, I couldn't reach it. Just pull the cord up. Bro, it can't. You're right. See, that's all you had to do. <laughs> God damn, boy. <laughs> dude, there ain't no fucking switch. Yes, there is, bro. Oh, the bottom? Okay. We're good now. I ain't got my son tan no more. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> ass show. That's why we're here. That's why we, we went, got video right we, now. We went from a little less to <laughs> terrible again. But um but it, going back to the going back to the running back, I think that's great value. Um because if he doesn't work out, hey, it was a fifth round pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can move on. Um and something unless something like Kenneth Walker or Brees Hall or something like that, mm-hmm. when you're gonna be spending a first, second round pick on them, and if they don't work out, it hurts. I, f- I feel like the Bills are going to be very aggressive in the draft to either get a, t- a running back in the first or they're going to get some stud that's going to help with their run defense. It's going to be one of the two. Cause, I mean, I feel like Ed Oliver hasn't really done a whole lot for you guys. Is that about accurate, Tyler? Yeah. And honestly, and the thing is, like... Greg's with, pretty solid, though. Huh? Greg's solid. I like Greg. Yeah, Greg from and, Miami. Yeah, and like, and like we were speaking to before, like this could be one of the first years that we see two defensive ends go one and two. Yeah. Um, and honestly, this def- this is probably the most, probably one of the most leap packed defensive drafts we've seen in a while. True. Um, so there's there, there can definitely be late value um, in the first round when it comes to defense if they're wanting to wait on the running back. Which, honestly, in my opinion, can I see Kenneth Walker or Brees Hall going first round? Yes. Do I think they deserve it? Uh, not necessarily. I could see them maybe being a second, third round pick, and if they fall that far, then yeah, definitely Bills has got to jump on that when they're available to. Yeah. But if not, again, that um, you know, I would I would back. get Kenneth first, maybe late first. If I was a team, I and Kenneth was there, I would one hundred percent snag that personally. Um, where do we kind of want to go, go from here, guys? Because we got multiple games here uh, to kind of talk about. Whether if it be like Green Bay and Cleveland, Seattle, Chicago, Indian, Arizona, KC, Pitt, the Bengals game. How how where where do we want to go, man? We got so much. Um. Well, I kind of want to before we do into those. I kind of want to talk about the two endpoints at the bottom. What's oh happening, yeah. What's happening with Carolina and and yep. my point with let's, let's do Stafford. that. Let's, let's talk about it. Um, so I'm officially off the train. Oh, um, off the I Carolina have, train. Yep, I've officially re- <laughs> refunded, <laughs> the refunded the ticket. Officially refunded the ticket. <laughs> um, I am now suing the. the, the <laughs> <laughs> I'm suing the the train service for my time there. Terrible experience. Um, I read a stat last night. Um, Cam Newton has completed 24 percent of his completions. Yep. I do. Uh, like that's worse than that's um, fucking tough. Something Harrington, what was it? Joey, Joey Harrington, worse than him. <laughs> worse than him. <laughs> that's a throwback. Yeah, man, that's the tough. worst completion percentage since Joey Harrington. So yeah, I'm suing for my uh, for emotional distress being on that train. Damn, terrible egg sandwiches on the train. And I know, I, I know, Josh, Josh, and Josh, aka Iggy XX, who I'm doing co stream with, he's a huge Carolina fan. I'm so that sorry. Sucks. That sucks. I'm so sorry. That's unfortunate for him. Yeah, yeah. It is. He, it needs is. To, he needs to jump off. He's going to go, hey, go, hey, get out. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm suing for my time. He, <laughs> He's fucked. He's going to get one of those. Um, one I'm of those. Look at Robbie real quick. He's going to get one of those infomercials. <laughs> Have you been a Carolina <laughs> fan since this year? This year, you're you're in the mood for any conversation. I feel um, you. That's how it is being so, yeah. a Bears fan or even a Jags fan. Robbie's been doing pretty decent here lately. Yeah, Robbie's been killing it. I mean, he's the only bright spot in that team right now. Yeah, <laughs> which true, is especially since C-Max out, which is unfortunate because I was on the train to begin the season. Yeah. And now at the end of the season, he's like, I got your back, dog. I ain't got, <laughs> I no, got, you now. I ain't got no quarterback, but I got your back. <laughs> Who's their quarterback now? Sammy? It's, it's Sam, yeah. It's back to Sam. Yeah. They, need to... they got to figure something out. <laughs> they got to get but a quarterback. I did, say Draft time. I did see a thing also. Um, it was uh, It's called Quarterback Intel or something like that on YouTube um, where they said that for the Broncos not to do what Carolina did. They got rid of Bridgewater because he was quote unquote not good enough, and then got Sam Bradford, Cam Newton, PJ Walker, yeah, who are clearly worse than what Teddy Bridgewater is doing. So it's basically his pitch for Broncos to keep Teddy. Me as a Broncos fan, I don't think he is the long term no. solution. He's a bridge. Um, he's definitely a bridge quarterback. He's, he's not as good as Tyrod as a bridge, but he's Facts. a bridge. Um, 
I think he's he's able to win you games. He's able to probably to get you into the playoffs at, eventually at some point because, I mean, there's much more glaring holes in, in Denver than just quarterback spot. Yeah. But, you know, he's he's definitely can be there. I mean, he's proved it in Minnesota. He can get you to the playoff, maybe win a game or two. He's not going to be the guy to get you to a Super Bowl. But, I mean, for what we have right now, that's – Teddy's all right. I like Teddy. Right. Um, but speaking of quarterbacks, moving on, um, Matthew Stafford. Man, it, he threw four picks, right? Yeah. But Damn. but look what Connor C- Cup is doing. Cooper Cup. Cooper Pretty Cup. Boy Connor Cooper Cup. Cup. Yeah. A couple of years ago, he was the hot commodity at our work. He was a hot commodity at our work, yeah. yeah. Um, would, never, would never start him, though. He was right at the bench because he's too pretty to get in. He, that was the saying. He ha, he is possibly having one of the greatest receiving years for a receiver. Yep, in history, out of nowhere too. Yeah, he's poised to at least tie the record for catches and break the record for yards, and then get like I don't know how I don't remember what position guess, it was for TDs. And the whole reason why I wanted to talk about this, um, who was quarterback to Calvin Johnson when he did it? Exactly, Stafford. So. And then it kind of yeah. it kind of segues into this. The Lions just continue to ruin careers, man. <laughs> <laughs> it it continues. Yeah, I don't know. Dan, uh, Dan Campbell's living it up right now. He is having the life. True, but Riding all them kneecaps off. <laughs> 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 but um, back going back to Stafford, I think I mean other than the game from Sunday or whatever, um, or last week, Matthew Stafford. He just continues to prove he's always been a good quarterback, a great quarterback. Did you guys see his uh, his little accomplishment that he also had? Mm-mm. Fastest uh, quarterback to ever reach fifty thousand yards. Damn, and you know fastest time, fastest one man. I mean Stafford's never been a bad quarterback. He just always gets fucking overlooked because he was in Detroit. Yep. I mean in Detroit, the dude passed for five thousand yards. That's that's a big deal. But well, I mean I, it. It is a big deal. Then Drew Brees does it like nine times. Not the point. Uh, you know, then he continues to pass for like 4,000 plus yards almost every season in Detroit. I think literally almost every damn year in Detroit, yeah. he passed for at least 4,000 yards, except for like maybe two. Uh, I mean, it's just when it came to Detroit, like the problem is he just didn't have a fucking team around him. He, it was him and Calvin Johnson. They never had an established run game. You know, the offensive line was always subpar, and the defense always ate ass, except for maybe there for a couple years. I mean, Darius Slay had some moments for him, obviously. Now he's balling out over in Philadelphia, having a phenomenal fucking year, probably his best year he's ever had. But Stafford's always been a good quarterback, and, you know, the fact that he's been on the, the passing end of two of the greatest receiving seasons of all time is fucking wild to me. Cooper Cup's a boss. He really is. Um, and especially <clears throat> to do it with two different type of guys, right? Yeah, that's also true. Two very, very different very, guys. Very different kinds of ki- uh, skill sets. You know, uh, Cup is more of this kind of, you know, dump it off 10, 15 yards. He can have potential to go, to go, go the long haul. Yeah. When Calvin Johnson, he's more of a guy that's going to beat you on the line and he can go 30, 40 yards, catch a deep ball, and then accelerate and – just you know, throw with, it up to him. Just throw it, it up. It exactly. Don't matter. We got four so guys on him. With being able to d- to do it with it's two, like a Randy Moss and then a yeah. Steve Smith. Yeah, yeah. that's it, basically to, what you got. To do it with two two guys at the opposite ends of the skill set spectrum is kind of phenomenal because what the training that it takes. You know, I've played a little, very little quarterback, and I'm sure anybody that's played any kind of football or even knows football knows what kind of time quarterback has to put in with, with that receiver to know his skill sets and to have timing down is so impressive of yeah. what he's doing. For sure. I mean, like, I know there was a lot of reports that all throughout the offseason when Stafford got there, him and Cooper Cup, they were working together a lot. And yeah. it's fucking showing right now. Uh, yeah. You know, But the problem is with Stafford still is right now is like he just has those couple games every once in a while where he does what he does and maybe throw four picks. And it's just like if, if – Hopefully he will not do that, and well, when when it matters most, that's the one thing. Right, that is the one thing is let's not do it when it matters most, because that's where it's going to really shine for Matthew Stafford. Not because I'm on the Stafford train. I was on the Stafford train when the, when the season fucking started. I was all about Stafford in L.A. All right, you know, I, I've MVP potential campaign, which forgot and, all about Tommy Brady. Which at this point, you know, he's not going to win the MVP. I think we can all establish that. At this point, the MVP front runners are either going to be Aaron Rodgers or Jonathan Taylor, in my opinion. But honestly. With the season that he's having with Cup, I I put him in there. I put him in, at least in the conversation. He may not be a favorite, 
Um, because he's of, in the conversation. Yeah. But he's definitely in the conversation. He's definitely right there. Right. Uh, who's definitely not in the conversation is Baker Mayfield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what does this tell you about these two teams? Let's be real. Okay. He, he was being nice and giving the ball away. Clearly. It was Christmas, man. I know. He's trying to give the Packers something nice. But here's the problem. Though. I will <laughs> defend him, though, on this. That was a pass interference. Oh, the, what, the one at the end? 100% that was holding. Yeah. That was fucking 100% holding. holding. 100% holding. The one, the, the game ceiling pick, that was 100% holding. No yep. doubt. But, like, what does this tell you about the teams? Like, Green Bay picks him off four times. Really, let, you know, let's take away the one at the end because that was 100% holding. Let's, say, let's just say three times. And they only beat him by, like, what, two points? What does that yeah. tell you about both teams? You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'm not sitting here discrediting the Packers. Cause I, yes, I do hate them. That's very yeah. obvious. But I, I, I respect the shit out of them. I know they're a good fucking team. They're a Super Bowl favorite. But, like, what does this tell you about, like, you know, it's it's the same question that I had that I already asked earlier, where it's just like, you know, are, are they that bad or are this that good or what? How, how do you guys feel about that game? Because I feel like if you're going to pick the guy off three times, I know four times on the stat, you should blow him out a lot more than what you did. What yeah, was, at least what was the spread on that game. I don't remember the spread on that. Game. Let's look at that. Let's see if there was a little, something fishy about it. That might be very true. Um, you know, oh, that, that the NFL just feels likes to rig stuff. You and know? then when it comes to that, like you know, when it comes to the two teams, it also comes back like, what do you do with Baker? I mean, this was supposed to be his contract year. Okay, he has played very average, very subpar, and had these moments of crap. Like, if you're Cleveland, we've asked, we've talked about this before, like, what the fuck do you do? Because in my opinion, you go ahead and you try to re-sign Baker, but for a normal-ish quarterback deal, which I think, Shane, that's what you pitched at one point as well. Yeah, um, you know, I pitched kind of the same thing for another quarterback, I forgot. But, uh, yeah, I'd definitely re-sign him for a normal, average quarterback, maybe two, three years with a player option. Because the thing, when it comes down to it, he's the quarterback that got you over the hump. That is he's true. He's the yeah. quarterback that made you not be the Browns that we all know and love, right? True, true. Um, you know, he took y'all to a winning season, you know, took y'all to y'all's, you know, not going 0 and 16, however many times they've done it or whatever. But to so where you have to give him some leniency on that and realize that there is some more glaring things in this team that needs to be fixed, mm-hmm. right? Yes, you have Landry, but he's playing off and on. Run game's not, like, hitting what it used to be. Yeah. Um, Chubb's not there, and, you know, they have Hunt, who's clearly fallen off. Yeah. You know, there's more glaring things on that team than just quarterback. And honestly, yes, Baker's not playing what we expect him to be or what he was, but I think you cannot move on from him right now. I agree. Um. Sign like I said, sign him to two three, two three year contract, maybe with a player option, and and try to fill those holes. What did you get for the spread? Um, so the total was twenty four to twenty two, which equals forty six points. Mm-hmm. Over under was forty seven. Mm. Somebody had the under in that game. <laughs> Somebody had the under with the Patri- with the uh, Packers because it was fucking. It was twenty one to twelve going into the third quarter at halftime. I don't know. That game's just weird to me, man, because I'm telling you, you're going to pick a guy off that many times, like three times throughout the game. But I think the thing was also is um, – It was also seven and a half Green Bay, so that didn't really matter. Yeah. And I think also the thing is is Green Bay has – they're oh, don't get me wrong, they're a top team in the NFL, but they have glaring inconsistencies. That is true. You know, we saw the very first game of the year when yeah. they got beat – the you shit know, out of yeah. him, yeah. And Aaron Rodgers was like, well, you know, we're not, that's not going to happen again. We'll but, figure it out. Yeah, but, you know, and then they went on their hot streak, and then they lost, and then hot streak, and then, you know, this game with, with Cleveland is is this – they seem to be bad at the worst times. Yeah. That is a good way to put it. And I also feel like one problem with the Packers, I feel like um, I feel like they take their foot off the gas pedal. You know, once they get up a little bit, I feel like they take their foot off the gas. You know what I mean? Instead of just like kind of slam it to the floor and keep doing what you're doing, I feel like they kind of light up a little bit. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that's going to really fucking bite them in the ass here soon. They just don't want to blow people out for some reason. I don't know. It's uh, fucking wild and, to me. They have I all agree. the ability to. And I, yeah. ha- I hate that so much. Um, I hate that. I hate, and Arkansas is a big thing for it. Arkansas always does that. We're up on a team. We let the foot off. We end up fucking losing. Yeah. Um. You know, and we see. You know, Cincinnati got some heat for what they did <laughs> over the over the weekend Man, for running it up. Out. But the thing is, like, at the end of the day, 
you're here to win a game. Whether it's by one, whether it's by one or a one hundred, it doesn't fucking matter. Look at Georgia Tech in that one game back in like the twenties. Yeah, (laughs) twenty two, Cumberland. Like if you if you don't want us to score, fucking stop us. Yeah, bingo. It doesn't fucking matter if there's now. I understand if there's three seconds left and you just throw a fucking bomb just because you know you can score. That's a dick move. That's that's another story. But you know if there's four minutes left in the quarter uh, in the fourth quarter and you're up by twenty one and you fucking score. Oh, well, fucking stop us. That's yeah. the way I see it. And that's the way Joe Burrow saw, saw it. I mean, he was like, he was like, well, how do you feel about, you know, we didn't really take a look of, you know, a liking to you running us up. I was like, well, and Joe Burrow came out. He's like, I don't, I don't care. He's like, y'all did it to us last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I looked at the games from last year. I don't remember the exact totals, but I think Baltimore scored almost 40 points both games. It was like 38, 38, I think maybe both times. Both times Bengals scored just a field goal so you're looking at an 80 to 6 score difference oh. from the two games yeah. last year so i mean it is what it is and i i've never understood i mean when i was younger i i i hated when teams you know would score a touchdown you know with two minutes left in the game and they're up by 21 already it's like man what's the point but as i've gotten older you and, get it. and i get into competition it's like, man, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, if you if you truly don't want us to score with four, three, two minutes left in the game and we're, we're already up by three scores, then fucking stop us. Oh, shit. Look at Kevin Kelly at PA. Well, not Presbyterian anymore. But yeah. I mean, he, he didn't give a fuck. He would score 90 on you and be like, peace Whatever. out. Later. Yeah. I'll see you next year. And you talking about the nowhere. Bengals, like, do you guys think the Bengals are a legitimate threat or just like they're going to do okay? Because you got to keep in mind, even though you know they played very well against the Ravens, the Ravens are – terribly injury ridden you know you had like one of the best journeymen in the nfl history with josh johnson who's played on almost every single team uh starting for the game you know plus all the other injuries they've had across the board and then covid you know it it, are the Bengals a legitimate threat i as of right now i'm gonna say we'll see because we got they have a big ass game this weekend that's going to determine that answer how do you guys feel on it right now i agree um and my thing is what i've been preaching especially like this episode is consistency yeah You've got to do it week to week to, in order to be considered a threat. You know, I didn't necessarily consider New England a threat until they went on their win streak. Right. Hey, you know? Is Miami a threat? Yeah. I mean, they're on, they're on a, what, a seven-game win streak? Or is it, yeah, they're on you a seven-game. You teams, though? Yeah, see, that's my thing about it. It's they're like, in the damn Mountain West Conference right now. <laughs> That, <laughs> That's what they are. They're playing like, the Mountain they're, West. They're, they're, they're the first ever team to have a seven-game losing streak and a seven-game win streak in the in the same season. They got them cupcakes. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, because like I looked at the last uh, seven games they've won, and of all the games, only one of those teams was a legitimate team. And I I didn't go back and look at the game. I probably should have, but I'm 99 percent sure Lamar was playing that game, which was the Ravens. Yeah. But every other team they beat, they beat the Jets twice. They beat the Texans. Uh, drawn a blank on the others, but it's just a bunch of cupcake teams. So it's like, is the Dolphins legitimate? I don't know. Lamar, last year, Lamar played. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, last year, I would have said yes because they had a lot more pieces on the table on defense and stuff. Kyle Van Noy was a fucking stud for him last year, and they fucking got rid of him for some random that reason. Dumb. That was so stupid, especially since they're still paying the guy, and he's yeah. in fucking New England. Your rival team in division, you're you're still paying for him while you while he's going against you. It's so so idiotic. You know, I don't know if the Dolphins are gonna be legit. Legitimate threat. In my opinion, if the Dolphins get into the playoffs as a wild card team, they will get the shit beat out of them round one. That is my opinion you personally. Don't, you don't take a bet they lose next two weeks. What are their next two games? I forgot. Tennessee and New England. Oh yeah, at yeah. Tennessee and New England goes to Miami. Yeah, they're gonna lose both those games. No, what if they split it? Nine and eight. Nine and eight. Uh, I think they could get that seven spot then. Can you get in the playoffs on nine and eight? Let's see. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, we've seen teams seven this year. Yeah, seven. seven. Yeah, that's, that's seven spots up for grabs. Dude, uh, how the charges fall off like that? Am, I know. Am I just missing that? Or the charges have fucking fallen off? Weren't they time. like five and one? Yeah. yeah, they they were balling and they have just dropped all. They lost to fucking Houston with <laughs> same Long with Mid- the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, that's normal. That's normal. 
uh, you know, sometimes teams just fall off like that, like the Cardinals, which is another question. You know, Indianapolis, they're, they're getting fucking hot at the right time. Will that die off? Because there's no, you know, Carson. I understand Carson's not the center point. It's Johnson Taylor. But with no Carson, that is going to potentially cause a problem. You know, they're getting hot at the right time. But let's talk about Arizona because they were hot at the beginning of the season. And just in true Cl- uh, Cliff Kingsbury fashion, his team can't pull it together at the end of the year. Are, are the Cardinals dead in your mind? Uh, or are they can they pull it back together? Because I think D Hop's out for the year now. Uh, he may come back for the playoffs, but I think he's done for the regular season. I think Arizona's done for. I think they're done for this year. I think they got beat by the damn Lions. They are done. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Right? That's true. That's true. That's true. I, I think they're done. They've lost too many key pieces and and key games when they, when they can't get it together. Um, I I just don't know if it's a depth issue or if it's coaching issue, if it's a player issue. But something happened after they lost that first game. Um, Against the Packers. Yeah, and after that, it just went to shit. They will make they will make a run if they put in Trace McSorley. Shut okay, the fuck buddy. Up. Shut the All fuck right. up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but, no, nah, yeah, they play uh, Dallas, and then they end it with Seattle. So I, I, I think they're going to get beat by Dallas. And 11 and 6. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're going to get to the playoffs, but I think they'll lose round one at this point. I, I, I just just because they've lost all the all the steam, that's the problem. Is that you're just you're just not hot right now. I mean, now. they've lost what six out of the last seven or something yeah. like that. Like something stupid. It's kind of outrageous to be honest. But a team, another team that's getting hot at the right fucking time is the Chiefs. Are the Chiefs all the way back right now? Because I mean, they beat the shit out of Pittsburgh. I know Pittsburgh didn't have T.J. Watt. That was obviously one major factor there, and the offense had been kind of hey, hit or miss anyway. It don't matter who you ain't got, who you got, blow them out. Yeah, shouldn't have got whatever. Did he get COVID? Which one? Who? T.J. I think T.J. Yeah, should stay the fuck home. <laughs> No, nah, dude, like, KC, in my opinion, like, they, they're they getting hot at the right fucking time, yeah. and I feel like they're all the way back right I mean, now. we've seen it, all the all the great teams, especially, like, I mean, you can go back to New England, you know, on their repeats and on their championship teams, they may have not been good. Hell, look at Tampa Bay from last year. Yeah. You know, getting hot at the right time <coughs> could mean the the most. Um, You know, they went, well, I think it was, uh, Tampa Bay last year, like, like they went undefeated in the last like eight games or something like that. Yeah, it was year. something fucking stupid, yeah, ridiculous. Um, it was right after teams won nine straight. Yeah, they <laughs> they lost, they lost, and then went into a bye week, and then came back and went undefeated from there on out. Um, so it's about just getting hot and getting the players back at the right time, and I think Kansas City's doing that. Um, so they're, I know whoever plays them, uh, I don't are they in contention of a first round bye? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, AFC in my opinion is kind of wide, Tennessee, wide open. Tennessee's right now. the only one that's knocking on the door. But yeah, it's gonna be KC or them. So I mean, yeah, I mean you're looking at a first round bye. Maybe Cincy. Yeah, true. Because they're two games behind. Yeah, yeah. Cincy. Cincy's intriguing. But if they the beat KC this weekend. Yeah. So that that <laughs> wouldn't that be some shit. Cincinnati I would, is I the number one seed. I would love to see it. I love Cincinnati. I've liked Cincinnati for so long. Um. <laughs> I would love to see them be Kansas City, but Kansas City is just a better round team. But the thing is, like I said, you getting hot at the right time means the most, and that's what Kansas City's doing right now. And then for Pitt, man, in my opinion, they're fucking beyond dead. And it's like right now, it's like with a guy like Mike Tomlin as head coach, you know this dude's gonna go out fucking swinging. But it's just like. I, you know that's what he wants to do. It's in his pride to do so. But do you really fucking want to? Because, like, the reason why I say that is because they are in contention for a playoff spot still, which is baffling to me. But it's like, if they don't make it to the playoffs, guess what? You could potentially get the 10th overall pick. If, if you lose the next couple of games, you got the 10th overall pick with Pittsburgh. Maybe draft a quarterback. Get, you know, get something that you really need. But if Can you – pick it? But if you you know win, yeah, you're gonna be in the twenties of the draft. You That's can a, still get you a good quarterback. Yeah, maybe you might not get Kenny Pickett, but you might get Malik Willis. I don't but know. But do you want Malik Willis? I wouldn't want Malik. You Willis want at this Kenny point. Pickett? I want Kenny Pickett to baby. stay in Pittsburgh. Yeah, bingo, 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 bingo. I mean, dude, Pittsburgh's fucking dead. I think it'd be a good fit um, because didn't Pickett and Claypool put, play together? No, Claypool went to Notre Dame. Or, yeah, you're right. I thought they had a Pittsburgh receiver. Man, for some reason, I thought Claypool went to USC. James, James, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> James, well, James uh, Washington and Mason Rudolph played together in Oklahoma State. No, oh, okay. okay. I don't know if that's the connection. I don't, where Deontay went to USC, I think. Deontay Johnson? Okay. 
Yeah, John Jones. Probably not. Not. No, probably okay. not. Probably not. I, don't know. I, I thought Terrible they shot. had a, a Pittsburgh receiver, but I could be wrong. Well, let's look at their roster real quick. Okay. Um, well, they had. Well, no, no, he's not from Pitt. He was from Maryland. I was gonna say they had Darius Hayward Bay for a long ass time. But anyways, n- no. But see, the thing is, like, it's so hu- like thinking from a a franchise standpoint, it'd be like so hard for me to draft a quarterback in the first round. With this, uh, with this upcoming draft, yeah, and even next year's draft, mm-hmm. like I mean, yeah, as much as I would love as an Arkansas fan, hype up KJ, yada yada yada. But the thing is, like when it comes down to it, there's like even next year, there's not going to be the guy, mm-hmm. you know, or at least as of right now, like looking forward. So it's like even the next next two years, you're like, okay, there's not really a quarterback that's going to be the guy. For, yeah, the guy, the first round talent. So mm-hmm. what do you do? Do you do you take a chance? You know, swing for the fences and maybe it hits, or do you go safe and not draft and just take the risk of one of these other teams drafting a quarterback and seeing if it hits or not? So it, it's really it's it's really I could not be a, a a GM or somebody that makes that decision because I would I would go gray hair very quickly. Yeah. Did you find anything out? Uh, the closest guy to Pitt was Pat. At Penn State, Pat Fryermies. Okay, well, I don't know. You may literally also, nobody on the roster is from Pitt. <laughs> it may also be just because they do, as uh, Pitt does have a receiver that's a fucking beast. So maybe I don't know, just Juju. That. Yeah, no, the uh, guy that won the Blitnikoff Award. Yeah, was the name? Year. Is it Jordan Anderson? Is that his name or Addison? I'm not sure. Addison. Addison. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we got two more talking points. We'll get to some picks. Uh, first one, uh, the Seattle Chicago game. First off, pointless fucking win for the Bears. I'll go ahead and say it up front. But uh, is this the is it was this the end of an era in in Seattle? I know Pete Carroll came out and said he doesn't really want to start over or anything. But man, I can't help but to feel like this is the end of an era. I I think so. Um, I think somebody tweeted out. I think I follow a meme account that that tweeted that got tweeted or got liked by somebody that I follow or something <laughs> like that. They said that the Bears were offering so much when Russell Wilson was quote unquote on the trade block. Yeah. Um, and then Pete Carroll said, basically said, nah, fuck y'all. Um, oh, I, I know who that is. Cause you probably, cause I, I retweeted that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. His name is Eric Lambert. He's a yeah. writer up in Chicago. He's got, so, he's got a fucking phenomenal. The only opinion. time I see his name is whenever it says retweeted. Yeah. Dude, you know? dude has <laughs> phenomenal opinions. I, like I just need to follow them. And then, yeah. And yeah, I probably need to follow him too. Cause I, I like this tweet. Um, and then he said, you know, then Chicago goes and beats him. Poetic justice. Yeah, poetic justice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like man, it, it's tough. And and from from Pete Carroll's standpoint, Russell Wilson, you gotta be like, man, we just fucking lost the Chicago Bears. Yeah, with a third string quarterback. Granted, he's a Super Bowl winner. He's Super Bowl MVP, Granted, he could be a starter somewhere else. Yeah, Carolina. maybe. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, he could. He could. But New still, Orleans. it's it's <laughs> still our third string quarterback. Our yeah. our secondary. It, our secondary was fucked coming into this game. I just, I don't know. Man. I, uh, oh, shit. This John is Madden died. What? Hmm? John Madden died. What? Really? No, I thought it was fake. Hold on. I thought it was fake, bro. You can't just drop that on me in the middle of the show. That's dude. fucking tough, dude. That's tough. But, I mean, I, that, damn. That's, that's definitely, um, unexpected this morning. This morning, it is 5 o'clock in the afternoon, buddy. Dude, Adam uh, Shefty yeah, needs to yeah, get it he, together. Here's the thing from Adam Schefter. That's a, well, fuck. <sighs> Let's have a moment of silence for the legend that is John Madden. And Larry. Moments passed. Both Man, you, you can't just drop that on me in the middle of the show. <laughs> dude, I, dude, I thought it was a joke. Man, because somebody just posted, sent it in a group message. And I was like, I ain't no fucking way. But, and then I scroll down, I see Twitter. I'm like, I thought it was fake. I mean, he was in his 70s, 80s. 85. Right? 85, yeah. 85 staying alive. Shout out to, shout out to a goat. Yep. He'll Rest definitely be missed. Yeah. But, um, you know, his yeah. name he'll, his name will, will continue on, though. In the video games, at yeah. least. Yeah. Even though EA is completely butchering that video game, but 100%. That's, that's they a whole nother. They have fucked that game. You see, college football is trying to bring Madden into it. Yep, that's mm-hmm. tough. That, I'll take it though. You know, I mean, yeah, I <laughs> it's mean, better than nothing. If, if this, not, I'll just keep playing college football revamp. Yeah, true. But yeah. even then, like at this I mean, point, I'll, at this point, I'll play anything other than Madden. Yeah, 
Just because that game is so dog shit. And yeah. I don't know, man. What was that game we was talking about a few? Uh, it was a... Uh, what the fuck is it? You know the game. Uh, Doug Flutie's game. Doug Flutie, maximum football. Yeah, that game I fucking think, sucked. I think I'd rather play something else other than that. Dude. <laughs> I think I'd go outside and throw it, throw it to my dog. Before <laughs> I do that. But Madden has been bad since at least Madden 18. Madden 19. I'd, Madden. I'd take it back further than that, personally. Madden 13. <laughs> 12. Who was not 12. 12 was fucking good. I'll fight on about 12 that. 12 was Peyton. Yeah, 12 was Peyton Hillis. Random as fuck. 13, 13 is when it literally Check. all went downhill. That was the one with Calvin. Calvin, yep. And that's when they started connected franchise and it literally all went downhill yep. from there. Well, my th- my thing my biggest thing about the game is just, you know, I, I talk about this a lot with Josh um is the physics of the game. Yep. They've They've made it so animated based, especially in 19 and 20, to where you're not even playing football. You're just looking to get your player into the animation. Yep. And if you get that player into the animation, you're going to win the game. That, that's how 2K is, too. Spe- I know. And 16, was, 16 was fucking great. That's why I quit fucking playing 2K. And then 17 started going down, 18, 19 is just um, sucks. And it kind of, you know, it, it was, and it's really, and from my opinion, that really started when they, Introducing these stupid ass fucking X factors. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the whole superstar shit. I don't like none of that. Yeah. Like I mean, I like until play football fourteen when you have an impact player, but it just lets them know there's too many impact players. That's the thing. Well, until play football fourteen, you had two on offense, yeah, two had, on defense, yeah, right? Which Madden's I thought I thought just, that was a decent number. But, in, but yeah. even then, on until play football fourteen, it doesn't. It gave them like a two overall boost. Yeah. But physically in the game, it does nothing. Yeah. It just lets you know, okay, what player is playing great right now on that other team. That's how it should be left. Yeah. It should not be this X factor stuff to where you could hit a button and fucking have a a two K or NBA jam fucking hot streak and just fucking be able to yeah. lob shit up. So it's kinda of ridiculous. See, that's but. what happened to two K with them badges. If you ain't got badges, you that don't matter if you're ninety nine overall, you ain't gonna do shit. You can be um, fifty seven with a great three point badge, you can be draining everything. Yeah. It's just stupid. I don't like – they're making it too difficult for me. No problem. I'm, I'm fucking simple, man. Just give me the game. I'll play. I'll get beaten. When really, like, times in a row. It's difficult, fuck. It's difficult, but simplistic, and it's annoying. Yeah, because, it's too simple. Because any, any G.I. Joe or any Joe Jane or whatever can get on the game and be like, okay, well, I'm going to drop 100 bucks on this game. I'm going to get all my badges. I'm going to get all this. See, that's why I like FIFA. And it's like, man, it's like, Park that what bus. the fuck is this? Right. Like, just give me some classic NCAA football 14, even match up head on high head. I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah. Straight up. G- give Alex FIFA and MLB. I bet he'll beat your ass. Whoa. Whoa. Let's calm down now. <laughs> you a gamer, dude. You'll you'll figure the trick out. Let's See, calm like down. NBA Live 05 three-point contest, it don't matter. if You could be the greatest one, and I'll walk in that bitch. I'll watch for the leg twitch. Leg <laughs> twitch means release the button. <laughs> I go pick it up right now. Sixteen years later, and, I watch that leg twitch and see things like that. Every time, that's what that that's what should be the difference in the games, right? Yeah. Knowing the cues, knowing this, knowing that, not some oh I can press a button, activate X factor. Yeah, it's like bro. Yeah. But um, anyways, we should probably Damn, move John on Madden from this, bro. Got John us, Madden got us on a got us on this uh, whole this, different uh, level game of state <laughs> mode over here. Shout out to John Madden once again. Let's have another moment of peace for the legend. All right, moments pass. Uh, let's jump into our last talking point, which is the Pro Bowl. Uh, yo, I, look, I understand the Pro Bowl is just a giant popularity contest, but this shit's fucking whack. Why the fuck is Lamar Jackson in here? Besides the popularity aspect, why the fuck is he in the Pro Bowl? Because Baltimore's not going to the Super Bowl. His stats are fucking terrible. Baltimore's not going to the Super Bowl. He's got 16 TDs to 13 interceptions and only two rushing TDs for like, what, 500 something rushing? His stats are dog shit. Get him out of the fucking Pro Bowl. Because Josh Allen's going to the Super Bowl. Josh Allen got snubbed. Joey Burrow got snubbed out of the AFC. I mean, for your three AFC quarterbacks, you got Justin Herbert, uh, naturally, Patrick Mahomes, naturally, and Lamar Jackson. Uh, Justin, I could see. He's still got some good stats, even though the team has kind of dropped off. Patrick's popping off. I get that. But Lamar, that's a fucking waste. That's a waste of a pick, dude. It's okay. He'll have COVID and he can't show up. Yeah. He, I think I think, I think, think he's enough of a realist to just opt out anyway. He's like, yeah, I yeah. fucking suck this year. I'm just going to go ahead and give it to someone who's actually worth a damn. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, and Joe Mixon for the running backs, though. Uh, I feel pretty good about those. I feel pretty, especially yep. Joe Mixon and John Taylor, obviously. I mean, yeah. I feel good about those. Yeah, I think Chubb's kind of an iffy one. Yeah, yeah. But. 
Uh, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen for wide receivers. Not bad, not bad. Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey for the tight ends. Uh, the offensive line. Shout out to uh, Rashawn Slater. Shout yeah. out to him. Uh, f- uh, rookie uh, getting to the Pro Bowl. That's what college did he go to? Again? Northwestern. Northwestern. Yep. Out uh, there in Illinois. Hey, you got not Deion bad. Dawkins, though, going. Yes. Yeah, you tech. already snow. Yep, yep. That's his motto. You already snow. Obviously, Quentin Nelson gets to the Pro Bowl, even though I don't think he's Goat. played a lot this year. Because uh, I know he's had like, some foot issues at the start of the year. Hey, 25% of Quentin Nelson is better than some of these. Hey, Quentin Nelson's a <laughs> fucking absolute monster. Where's he from? Notre Dame. Notre Dame just can't get quarterbacks. Hey, real. we can get the motherfuckers to protect them, though. Mm, well, you can do that, but you can't do anything else, really. Uh, looking at the, like, the rest Chester of the roster, Lake kind of going down for it. Uh, shout out to Denzel Perryman. I love to see that. I thought that was super cool. Yeah, Den- I-, I love Denzel Perryman when he was in college at Miami. And, you know, he had a... It just kind of like a decent, okay career at, you know, at the Chargers. Nothing's you know amazing, but now he's in Vegas, gets to the Pro Bowl. That's pretty nice. Uh, naturally, you got like uh, Kenny Moore, Xavier Howard, Denzel Ward, all for cornerbacks, and then J.C. Jackson from New England getting a Pro Bowl nod there. Uh, he's cooking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing really too wild from the rest of the AFC. Naturally, you have Matthew Slater going for his tenth Pro Bowl. Shout out to Matthew Slater. Uh, but let's hop over to the NFC, kind of take a look at that, get some thoughts on this. Uh, quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Kyler Murray. How we feel about this? Uh, only one I'm kind of iffy on is Kyler Murray. I agree. With how, with how the, it's been recently, I'm kind of iffy on that. Yep. Who, who should be in over him? Who got snubbed there? Would we say Stafford? Would he be the natural one to say that they got snubbed? I would say so. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other a- the NFC quarterbacks that would be in that range of like getting snubbed there. I Jack mean, Paul. you well, could, you could, I you could make an argument for Kirk Cousins. I'm that's be that's real. what I was about to yeah, say. Yeah, because his stats aren't aren't bad. It's just when he's bad, he's bad. But like his stats aren't bad. Like before a couple of games ago, he was like. Like what, what was it like twenty five to three for TD interception ratio? It was fucking mm-hmm. stupid. No one's talking yeah. about it. So I mean, you could make an argument for him, but I, I feel like I feel like you could drop Kyler and probably put in, you know, Matthew Stafford. But again, it's a popularity contest. That's yeah. all this fucking. I'm surprised is. Dak wasn't. Yeah, there. Dak's another one that I'm kind of surprised it's not in there as well. Uh, what? Run- yeah, why isn't Dak there? What the hell? Yeah, and then for <laughs> running backs, you got Dalvin, James Conner, and Alvin. I'm surprised. James yeah, Connor. I'm surprised James, James Conner is in there. James. Like, what the fuck? Connor. I'm that surprised is, uh, he's in there. That's how you know his popularity. Yeah. <laughs> is he back in Pittsburgh? Like, hey, shit. <laughs> like, I, like, I figured it would be Aaron Jones would be the other 100%, one. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's fucking James Conner. Uh, for receivers, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, and Debo Samuel. Also, shout to, sh- shout to Justin Jefferson. Beat Odell, rec- uh, Odell Beckham's record for uh, most receiving yards in the first two seasons. Talk, talking about Odell, man, that just lets you know uh, Baker and Odell did not have a connection. No, they did not. They just didn't like each other from the start. That's just two egos that could not make. Because this is, what, four games in a row he scored? Since yeah. coming over Fine. from yeah. Cleveland? Yeah. Damn. But receiver wise, I feel pretty good about those guys. Yeah, yeah. D- Debo's been playing really well, and no one's talking about it. Yep. Good facts. He's yeah. the, he's, he's like Cordell Patterson, which that, back end. Look, okay, that is one of the biggest snubs from the NFC roster is yep. Cordell Patterson. I, I don't care how you fit him in there at running back. You know what? Like, fuck it. Uh, get rid of James Conner. Put Cordell's running back. I don't care. I don't yeah. care how you get him in there. Get him in the fucking Pro Bowl. Yeah. Dude's got like what fourteen TDs right now. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, also saw the stat that Debo is San Francisco's leading rusher and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is uh, because their leading rusher I think is Eli Mitchell for uh, you know is, or is the second place running back in terms of Damn. of of the speaking TDs of, and then you got places, a wide receiver over here. Speaking of places that need a running back, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, uh, George Kittle naturally, dude's popped off the past like five weeks. He, he he's put in fuck a, off. Colcomet's fucking. Insane. I think he's. I saw the stat with George Kittle. He's put in like nearly double the amount of yards the last yep. five games, and he did the first eight or something like that. Right. And then Kyle Pitts getting a rookie Kyle nod. Pitts. Kyle Pitts has like a shit ton of yards, but he only has like two or three TDs. Like that's the thing is like you know they haven't been able to get in the end zone, but dude's got like when I last checked a couple weeks ago, he had like almost seven hundred yards, so he's probably close to about eight hundred now. I mean, dude's popping off in that category, that and catches, but it's just they haven't been able to get in the end zone. Who else would get in was the tight end? Uh, out of the NFC, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that's a good good mixture. I, yeah, I, I think I think Kyle Pitts is a good pick there. Yeah, I, I mean, think that's why they didn't put a Patterson in. It's because Pitts. Man, Patterson is a fucking that. That's a massive snub, in my opinion. 
He'll be there eventually. James Conner will do something. Uh, for defense, naturally, you have like you know Aaron Donald, Jonathan Allen, who you know swung at uh, his teammate there. I forgot the Darren teammates. Payne. Yeah. yeah, Darren Payne. Didn't they right. go to college together? Yeah, yeah they, they both went to Alabama. Alabama yep. Damn, Nick Saban, what you doing down there? Uh, and then for linebackers, Robert Quinn from the Bears. Uh, he's currently on pace to break the single season Chicago Bear sack record, which I think our record is seventeen and a half. Dude's got like sixteen, uh, sixteen or sixteen and a half sacks right now, which is a hell of a comeback. And I know he won't be talked about in that category, but he, I think he deserves a, a mention in comeback player of the year because the dude had two fucking sacks last year. We signed him to like a four or five year deal. And he gets two sacks, and now he comes in and does this. Dude's balling. But I will say the biggest fucking snub, in my opinion, is Roquan Smith not going to the Pro Bowl. Like in the middle linebackers, that you know, obviously there's only two. Micah Parsons needs to be in there, and yeah. the, the other one's Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner's a fucking stud, future Hall of Famer. But yo, you got to put Roquan Smith in there. Roquan Smith's a fucking monster up in Chicago, and he's being disrespected as hell. Uh, for the cornerbacks, uh, Trayvon, Jalen, Darius Slay, which I love to see because Darius Slay has had a very good year, and then Marshawn Lattimore. See, the problem with the cornerbacks here is all four of those are such good picks, but the dude out of uh, Atlanta, I'm drawing a blank, is A.J. Terrell. Yeah. A.J. Terrell is Clemson. having – yeah, he's having a fucking dope-ass year. Yeah. And he, no one's talking about it really until recently, because like over the past few weeks, like he's been like allowing like under thirty five yards, like pretty much consistently every single week. But everybody wants to look at Diggs with his eleven picks. Yeah. Also, how many yards is he giving up? I know. I know that's that's the problem. <laughs> he can get picks, but numbers, he allows a numbers lot of yards really too. Lie. Yeah, dude, for sure. The question is, will he actually manage to get to fourteen? Will he get three more picks in two weeks? I say no. Wait, Originally, play, I, uh, who did they play again? Uh, they're playing what Arizona? They're playing Arizona this week. We just said it earlier. He could too. definitely get one against Arizona. I think he could get up to thirteen. I think he'll get one pick a game. I think is what we're going to get to. One pick a game. You don't yeah. think he's going to get a double, a, a two piece? I mean, if he if he actually managed to tie the record of fourteen, which hasn't been touched since like what the fucking like thirties or forties, that'd be so cool. That that's that's a he a ends stat. it on Philly. Mm. Is it going to be Hurts or is it going to be Gardner? Speaking of which, man, I, kn- I know Philly kind of pulled it back together, and you know Jalen. You know when I when I tuned in the game, Jalen was five for fourteen. When I tuned in the game, like an interception, it was just having a rough time. Like you got to let Minshew Mania run wild at some point. Was it maybe. you that sent me the Minshew and uh, the coach? No, I didn't send that, but I did see that though. Yeah. I, I re- when he walked I think in I, the office, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I retweeted it. Yeah, and, um, that's probably what it was. Yeah, he walked in. He walked in and asked the, what he had to do to be a starter. And no, he's just like not he, having it. He walked in there and said, "I I want to be the starter. I am the starter." And he and the coach was like, "Nah, it's Jalen. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen." Minshew Minshew will have a shot. I, I feel like, especially with New Orleans. The, Yes, I feel like with how this free agency and this um, you know draft is going to be, I feel like Minshew is going to get a starting job next yeah. year. It's just a matter of where. Minshew mania, man, it's going to run wild somewhere, and I'm fucking here for it. Uh, all right, boys, uh, let's get into our picks. Let's go ahead and knock these out. We're an hour and 30 in right now. Oh, no. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's jump. Hey, I, I said this th- was a loaded show. I had three weeks to prepare for this. Yeah, you did, so <laughs> hopefully you got it. All right, Ain't we'll, no tweeting from me. We'll, we'll we'll hit the music. Uh, once again, I still have not changed any songs. I fucking need to. I know. I'm just lazy. Three weeks and counting, Damn. boys. We're going to start a counter. Yeah, we do. We need to start a counter. <laughs> because that'll put the pressure on me. <laughs> that'll put Damn. the pressure on me to get it. All right, so we'll kick things off with the bowl games that we've got. Starting off with the Dukes Mayo Bowl, we have North Carolina and South Carolina. How are we feeling? Um, me Give me North Carolina. Tyler, are you just going to go with pick you gave me? You gave me North Carolina. Yeah, I'm going to go North Carolina. I like Meg Brown. Okay. But I also like South Carolina's coach. Saying he all, saying, yeah, he said, man, I don't like mayonnaise, but you can pour that shit on me. <laughs> but it's all good. Let's go. Let's go Carolina. Okay. Well, the North. <laughs> I just I figured that that would have uh, fucked us up if I was sick. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, Tyler, <laughs> Carolina, what? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to North Carolina as well. Uh, the Music City Bowl, Tennessee and Purdue. I like Tennessee, but guess what? Purdue. Purdue! Give me, I, I'm going to go with I'll Purdue as well, honestly. I'll keep it. Uh, I'm going Tennessee. I respect it. Uh, the Peach Bowl, that lost a lot of meaning, uh, unfortunately. We got Pitt and Michigan State. I, I honestly don't know where to go with this game. I really don't. 
I have. I'm gonna go Pitt, but I but I won't be surprised if Michigan State wins the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with you on that. I'm gonna go Pitt with the exact same mindset. Ty, are you gonna rock with Michigan State? Uh, yeah, because the 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 quarterback now is Nick Patty. Okay. That reminds me of SpongeBob. <laughs> so, <laughs> God damn. All right, the Las Vegas Bowl, Wisconsin, Arizona State. I'm going to Arizona State. <laughs> you said Wisconsin, Arizona State. Yeah. Yeah. God damn, why did I pick this team? Wisconsin. That's who you picked initially. Is that who you're sticking with? I guess. I mean, might as well. I'm Fuck gonna, it. I'm going to go with Arizona State. Uh, next up, we have the Gator Bowl. We have Wake and Rutgers who stepped up to the plate. I'm here for it. Yeah. Wake, Wake's going to blow them off because out. Yeah, Wake's going to fucking die. Is there, 45 is there a way? Is, now, on my, on my bowl projections tournament or whatever, I have Texas A&M, but, of course, they're not playing in it. Is there a way I can go back and change that before the, day, the game? The day. I'm pretty sure Yeah, I think the can. day of you go to it and then – I guess it pops up. Yeah, it locks. Okay, I see it. It locks uh, December 31st Yeah, at 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah. So any time before that, I can change it. Okay. But you can't change it right now because it won't show up. Yeah. Unless I'm just tripping. Oh, no. I have a picture. I have, like, pictures of my picks. I don't, I, I'm not actually in the app right now. But, okay. Um, I'm going Wake Forest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Texas Bowl, LSU, and Kansas State. LSU. Oh, damn. You said LSU, Kansas State. Yeah, I'm going LSU as well. Um, I picked LSU, so I'm going to go LSU. Uh, go Tigers. Sun, Sun Bowl, Washington State, uh, Central Michigan. I'm going Central Michigan. The Chippewas. Yeah, give me uh, Central Michigan as well. So y'all are y'all are about that maxing right now. Just like you, yeah. The yeah, Mac like, well, I picked, I picked Miami against Washington State, so... Central yeah. Michigan, Chippewa Walls. Yeah, I picked my Antonio too. Brown's my alma mater. There you go. And right. uh, and uh, White White went there. And Dan Lafleur. Danny, Danny Lafleur. Yeah, that's a throwback for you. That's a good one. I like uh, that. Next up, it's time, boys. The Outback Bowl, Penn State, Arkansas. Uh, Shane, I'll go ahead and write yours in. Woo, pick, <laughs> Tyler. I looked at the wrong. God, dog it. Um, I'll go ahead and write Penn State for you. <sighs> I feel like you have to. This has to be like your one emotional pick. You know, we have emotion. Well, the next one was my emotional pick. No, that's fair. <laughs> the next one was going to be an emotional pick. Uh, then, you then, know what? Then we're going hometown pick. How about, hey, that? How about that? I don't give a damn if it's Arkansas, if it's Notre Dame, if it's Penn State. Sean Clifford's playing. Give me Sean Clifford. All right, Penn State. Love to see it. Okay, he ain't got nobody to throw to, but fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, man, I'm very torn on this game because I feel like I'm choosing sides right now in this room. <laughs> and that's what's concerning me is that I have to choose a side. I'll come back to it. I promise. He said I'll come back I'll to come. it. Next up, Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. You're going to go with Notre Dame, right? They like the champion today. I will never go no- with Notre Dame, Oklahoma State. Yeah, give me, give me OK State. All trash. Uh, next up, Citrus. <laughs> I see where you go. I see where we're going. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Citrus Bowl, uh, Iowa and Kentucky. Well, a couple years ago, Benny Snell and uh, Kentucky decided they wanted to beat Penn State. A couple years ago, Iowa decided they want to beat Penn State as well as this year. So, regardless, I'm going Iowa. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm actually gonna go with Kentucky. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm as well. I'm going bluegrass. This blue ain't grass. basketball, dogs. I'm going bluegrass. <laughs> He's a bluegrass. <laughs> uh, Rose Bowl, Ohio State and Utah. Go oops. <laughs> okay, okay. Fuck uh, Ohio State. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go with Ohio State. Fuck Ohio State. Hell yeah. This is the former Urban Meyer Bowl. Let's go back to his oh, roots. Yeah. Shit, it is. You're yeah. right. <laughs> Let, let's go back to his roots. Well, his roots is Bowling Green if we want to get technical. Do you see Bowling Green making anything? <laughs> All right. Not okay. the, not Fast the forward a little bit. <laughs> let's go to the, the after the, the roots. Utah. We're going, right. we're going for the truck. By 20. <laughs> mark, it, <laughs> mark it down by 20. Utah by 20. By 20. All right. I 20 got piece. You. Nugget Pogs and some fries. 90. <laughs> All right, Sugar Bowl, Baylor and Ole Miss. See, I picked Baylor. Yeah, you did. And then Corral decided to come back. So, for that reason, 
Still going Baylor. Baylor. <laughs> I'm still going Baylor. All right. I'm, still, I'm, I'm Baylor as well. Switched it up at the end. I'm, huh? going, I'm going Ole Miss. You said you're going Baylor, Shane? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. College football playoffs, Orange Bowl, Georgia, and Michigan. Well, let's go back to the Penn State debacle. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of years ago, Penn State decided to strut up down there to Florida and Jacksonville okay. and play Georgia. The result was a loss. Of course. Penn State decided to stroll up to Ann Arbor this year, and I assume some last years and the years before, to play Michigan. What was that record? A loss as well. So, for that reason, fuck Michigan, Georgia. Okay. Even though I think Michigan's going to beat them. I don't want to see Michigan and Cincinnati. <laughs> I, I think I, think I want to ride with Georgia on this one. I think Georgia's going to get the dub. Yeah. Say George, okay. I think George is going to get the dub. Okay. I like it. Go big blue. He said go, go big, big blue. blue. You said, Tyler, you are going with Georgia, right? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, Florida, right? Yeah, Orange Bowl. Okay. All right, next up. Uh, oh, one thing I'm going to be known, I would love to see Michigan win, but I think it's going to be Georgia. Same. Same. Uh, I'm not using my emotional pick on that one. Me either. Um, <laughs> college football playoff, Cotton Bowl, Cincinnati and Alabama. Yeah, bro, you good? I'm good. Mm. Good, okay. Uh, I was waiting for some chaos from your side over the room over there. <laughs> we, we good, no, don't worry. <laughs> are you going to do it? I'm building it. Are you going to do was, it? So, here we go. Let's look are at, you going to do it? Let's look at some stuff real quick. Okay. Cincinnati is a, what did I say, 13? Yeah, 13 they are and a, a half. Something like that. They are a 13 and a half point underdog. Yep. Okay. Alabama has beat how many teams by 13 and a half? A lot. Yep. But guess what? They didn't beat Arkansas by 13 and a half. You damn right. They didn't beat Auburn by 13 and a half. They ain't beat LSU by 13 and a half. They they ain't beat Texas A&M by 13 and a half. So you want Alabama or Cincinnati to cover? <laughs> So they ain't beat Florida by 13 and a half, and you see how good Florida was. Was. So you know what that means? That's key with that, though. Desmond Ritter, upset city, baby. Cincinnati. I would would love to see it, but it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. Y'all going to cry. Y'all are like, damn, this motherfucker actually did it. I'm going to go opposite. He's He's going with the safe pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm going with the safe safe pick. I'm going, no, well, kind of. Kind of. He said kind of. I'm going Bama. But I'm saying Bama wins by thirty. He's at thirty. He's gonna they're like, gonna a, like a thirty L piece or like a thirty five five. Like Boy, a, if, they, if they win thirty five to five, I'll like a forty five ten. Forty five ten. That's like solid. A dirty thirty. Okay. He's gonna be dropped on. I mean thirty five a forty five ten is not thirty, but it's all good. It's thirty five. You said thirty. I know, but it's, it's at least thirty. <laughs> At least. You know what I mean? I thought you stop was, being technical. I thought you was doing what I say and just actual numbers. No, 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 no. I'm, You're just talking an area code. Yeah, I'm okay. Talking area zip code zone zone. I'm in that zone right there in that zone. <laughs> well, I haven't used my emotional pick yet, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use it right here. I like I'm, it. I'm oh going with Cincinnati. God. Come I like on, it. Guys. so I know what that means on Come the Arkansas on, Penn man. State. Okay, Arkansas Penn State. I'm just gonna go with Arkansas. I think Penn, I think Penn State has just I think they've got too much lost. I know. I agree. It's going to be tough. I mean, to be fair, Alex, to be <laughs> fair, be Alex, tough. if it wasn't for you, he would have picked Arkansas, too. So it's yeah. Oh, I know. I forced him into it. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, if it, if you wouldn't have been on the show, like let's say you're, you're not part of the show, I would have happily let him pick Arkansas because it's whatever. But you got a diehard Arkansas fan in here, and your team is playing against his team. you got to go with your own team. you yeah. got to. It's the rules. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I, I fully acknowledge they're going to lose. But that, I'm, I want to use my emotional pick for that. So, we're going to roll with it. Uh, Shane, what do we got for our spreads this week for our college games? Uh, let me bring them up. Let me bring them up. Penn State, Let's Arkansas. Let's see. Um, yeah, we got Penn State, Arkansas. Um, it opened up at 46 over under. And Penn State as a four-point favorite. It has flopped. Um, it is currently setting out Arkansas one-point favorite over under at 48. Uh, yeah, just give me the uh, give me the uh, minus one and give me over. Okay, I did not write these down, so naturally I'm probably gonna fuck these up. Just go on the Discord and open up the spreads. No, like 
Oh, uh, you know, like I write people. them down so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I have nothing to nothing to say because I fucked it up. So let's go. Give me Penn State plus one. Probably saying that right. And give me under forty eight. Okay, I'm pretty going. Sure, sure I'm going. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus one. You said over. I said over. Yeah. Yeah. So no, yeah. I said under. Yeah, he you said, said under. under. Okay. Yeah, you picked that right. I'm going, I'm, I'm going minus one over. Okay. How are they going to score? They ain't got nobody to score. <laughs> KJ will score. He'll get yeah. the job done. Yeah, he's a good runner. Um, Next is Bama and Cincy. Music cut out, bud. Well, <laughs> we only had one track left. And oh, it was just like the repeat. See, what well, happens? See, comes, you need more damn I, music. I know. Well, not at that, <laughs> but we went, what, six minutes of music in the first start of the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just because, like, the intro song is the full version, which is three minutes and 30 seconds. I got you. I just usually let it play. All right. But, um, anyway. Bama and Cincinnati. <laughs> Bama <laughs> opened up at a 13-point favorite over under at 59. Um, Bama is currently setting at 13 and a half point favorite, like uh, Tyler said earlier, and is currently setting at 59 and a half over under. So, what happened to en- encourage that half of a point, though? <laughs> Nick said we got on the phone. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm just, I'm gonna go with the safe route on this because I'm gonna pretend like I'm right. betting money. So I'm gonna go with Bama on this one, and I'm going over. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going minus. Over. I'm going. Sensi, give me the points. Things gonna be closer than y'all think. Bam, I'm probably still gonna win. But uh, give me a over fifty nine and a half because that that seems a little low. If you're gonna beat a team yeah. by thirteen and a half, I'd assume you're gonna yeah, score thirty five. I think the I think the over under is kind of a, a <laughs> gimmick. But um, next Watch is it end up being ten to seven. Yeah, <laughs> like Fucking, the damn Super Bowl a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, Georgia and Michigan. Um, Georgia opened up at seven and a half point favorite over under at forty three and a half. Um, Georgia's currently still setting at seven and a half point favorite, but the over under has shifted to forty five and a half. Give me the plus seven and a half, and give me the over. Um, I'm going plus seven and a half under. Give me Georgia. And over 45 and a half. Okay, let's hop over to NFL picks. See what we got going on over there. All right, so Thursday Night Football is officially dead. So we'll hop over to our noon games, kicking off with Philly and Washington. Give me Philly on this one. Give me Philly. You said Philly and Washington? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm looking at the wrong paper. Okay, um, Washington's quarterback's Tyler Haneke, right? Yeah. They got their ass blown out. Give me Philly. Uh, Rams and Ravens. Once again, the Ravens got their they ass blown out. Yeah, give me Rams. Give me Rams. That's two in a row. That's trifectas. I'm going Rams. Tampa Bay and the Jets. That's easy. Another one. Yeah, another one. Don't even, We ain't got to say it. I mean. Miami and Tennessee. This one is uh, ruffling, I, ruffling some feathers right here. Yeah, this one might ruffle some feathers. How we feeling? Uh, I'm gonna go with Tennessee, man. I really don't think Miami is that legit. I really don't. Uh, I feel like their schedule these past seven games have been too weak. Their only legitimate win was Baltimore. Yeah, I'm going Tennessee. I, I I'm looking for my picks here. I need a I need to make make them better. Um, <laughs> I'm going Miami. Um, I need to catch up to Alex about yep. five games. Yep, man. Is this one of the games I want to pick, though? It's definitely an intriguing one. I mean, they're still without Derrick Henry. Man, um, I get Miami. Fuck it. Let's let's try to try to start it out strong. You know, Jacksonville, New England, New England, <laughs> New England. Come on now, <laughs> don't do it. New England, <laughs> <laughs> Vegas, and Indy. Give me Indy, Indy. In honor of Larry, give me the Raiders. Oh, that's a good point. Give me the Raiders. <sighs> that's a good point. I kind of want to pick the Raiders now. No, I got to keep my lead on you. <laughs> I'm <gonna> go <laughs> that's a good point. I wish I would have thought of that. Shout out to Larry. 
Uh, I seen I, it earlier, and I'm like, <clears throat> damn, this one's tough. KC and Indy. This KC is and Cincy. Cincy, sorry. Thank you. He's a Indy. Uh, KC and Cincy, man. This is going to be a tough one. Whatever y'all go, I'm going opposite. <laughs> man, what you going, Alex? Give me KC. Fuck it. Give me Cincy. I'll try to make up all these five games in one week, knowing damn well I'm probably going to blow out my lead. I'm going Cincy as well. I'm going to be down eight games going uh, into next week. I'm starting to believe, even though it's only after one week, um, I'm, I, I think they've got some momentum after him throwing 525 yards. True. <laughs> so I'm going Cincy. Uh, Giants and Bears at Where, Chicago. God, Where are you that's going? Horrible I game. I picked the Bears <laughs> last week. I'm so, picking the Bears. You picking the Bears? What you going? Oh, that's tough. Both bad. Yeah. This is a battle of the bad. It is, yeah. Um, I've I've got to go Bears. You gonna go with your? Because only only because Danny Dimes is out. If Danny Dimes was playing, I would go Giants. Are you gonna go with your newly discovered second favorite team? They about to fall off because I lost by point five in fantasy to go to the championship because the Barkley got three point eight. So I'm a little pissed at him right now. So the Bears. Give me the Giants. That's what, four or five games right now? That's three. That's three? No, that's four. Yeah, it's four. Cause four. Of Miami. Yeah, because yeah. of Miami, yep. Atlanta and Buffalo. Give me Buffalo. Don't you fucking do it. Yeah, don't fucking don't, do it. Don't I mean, that's not do right it. Now. I mean, I didn't know y'all was asking me. <laughs> no. This is pretty obvious, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm going Buffalo. All right. Now, Easy. I, w- I will say, Tyler, for all my afternoon games, I did not actually write anything down for myself yet because I did not know. Uh, well, first off. That's good. Houston and San Fran. Dude, Houston is like sneaky good out of nowhere. With fucking Mr. Long Neck. <laughs> Long Neck is finally, he's finally Dude, here. Dude, he's going. He's finally here. Yeah. Guess what, though? He's going to win again. Give me Houston. I don't think I even picked Houston, but it's all good. I'll pick I'm, Houston. I'm going to go with Houston because. Long Neck? No, because I don't think Jimmy's going to be playing because of whatever he tore in his hand. You don't like Trey Lance? I don't think Trey Lance is going to win his debut now. That's my that's my thing. I don't think this, so. is this his debut. I thought he started like week two or three. Yeah, not it's not his starting debut. You know. Oh, okay, I think he's gonna stink. might be his home debut. He's gonna stink. That's that's my my thoughts. So I'm gonna go with uh, Houston. That's good. It's good as your Houston team to play though. Okay, going San Fran. He's at San Fran. I'm going. I, I believe in Trey Lance. I think he'll Debo. Be All you gotta do is give it to Debo. Denver and the Chargers. Hmm. Hmm. Chargers aren't playing so well. Denver's playing better Man. than they were. <laughs> he said better than they were. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Chargers on this one at home. Oh, yeah, that changes. I'm going Chargers as well then. If um, it was in Denver, it would been a different story. <clears throat> Chargers fell off the map here lately. True. Denver. Okay. Carolina and New Orleans. Urgh, I don't know. It's a battle of the bat again. It is. Is uh, Mr. Book... On a start, we have no fucking clue at this time because no their room, their quarterback room is <laughs> struggling. They, they are. Mm. I feel like that makes me want to go with Carolina because at least they know they should have Sam Darnold. But meanwhile, in New Orleans, you have no fucking idea who it's going to be. I think that's the only reason why I'm going to go with Carolina right now. I'm um, I'm going with my boy Ian Book and New Orleans. Trash. He probably won't even play. He'll probably be <laughs> Simeon or uh, the the running back. Quarterback tight end. Taysom. 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 <laughs> BYU. Jimmer School. Yep. Let's go Jimmer School. Uh, Detroit and Seattle. God, I, I'm i going to go Seattle just because I do not want Detroit to beat my team, man. So I'm going to go Seattle. I can imagine. Det- please, Detroit, please do not beat Seattle. <laughs> Tyler? Last week I picked Chicago to beat Seattle. Yeah, you did. And it panned out. This week. Oh, man. If uh, Dan Campbell in Detroit beat Seattle, I will go get his coffee. And I will look it up to figure out what his coffee is. That's like 10 shots of espresso or whatever, dark. Whatever. Shit. So, uh, <laughs> and I will bring that next time we are here. Bet. Say the less. studio. So, for that reason, let's buy some kneecaps off. Let's go lines. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. See, there, there goes my lead. 
<laughs> Arizona and Dallas. I'm going Dallas. I'm going Dallas. Dallas. I was like, yeah, it's it's tough to pick. I've picked. I wanted to pick Arizona because I feel like they have to win. I do too. They do too. But Sunday night football, Minnesota and Green Bay, which I think this will be the last Sunday night football. It's a good game. Let me go. Give me Green Bay. It's in Green Bay. Give me Minnesota. I feel like they always come out. They're like Iowa. They always beat somebody. I'm going Green Bay. And then Monday Night Football, Cleveland the and trash Pitt. teams. Yeah, a couple struggling teams. Cleveland and who? Pittsburgh. A couple struggling teams. <laughs> this is this is the uh, Monday before the national championship, so nobody's really going to care. <laughs> yeah. That's that's fair. Because they're all just like, damn, man, we got to wait another week for a good matchup. So uh, I'm going Cleveland. Fuck Pittsburgh. I don't like Baker. So, for that reason, give me Pittsburgh. I'm going Pitt as well. All right, what do we got for our NFL spreads? Um, You've got Buffalo and Atlanta opened up at Buffalo 13.5 point favorite, um, over under at 44. Um, it is currently setting at Buffalo 14.5 point favorite, Atlanta 44.5 uh, oh, over under. Give me uh, Buffalo minus 14.5. Uh, uh yeah, give me. Are you gonna over or under? Uh, give me over. I'm going Buffalo minus the fourteen and a half, but I'm going under. You don't think we're gonna score? Okay. <clears throat> um. No, I think y'all will score. Y'all just gonna score majority of the points. <laughs> <laughs> that is a solid explanation. <laughs> but, but fuck Jeremy, man. How Jesus. I look at it is. In order to get the 44 and a half, all you got to score is like 30 something. That's going to be easy. <clears throat> so I'm going to go Buffalo will actually beat the over. We're going 48 piece them. 49 piece them. 48 piece them. So give me Buffalo and give me the over. Yeah. It's going to be a blowout in the making. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking that something going to be like, you know, 30 to 14. I mean, that'll be 44. That'd be under. Let me... Because um, at 44 and a half, you got to be over 40. You got to be at basically at 45. Yep. So... um, It's going to be 26 degrees during the game. So that... How yeah. is the wind, though? <laughs> I got to look... Uh, right, while, look. while you're looking at that, I'll move on. Um, Dallas and Arizona. Dallas opened up at two and a half point favorite. Um... The over under is at fifty. Currently sitting at Dallas a five and a half point favorite. Arizona, I mean, Jesus. yeah, Dallas a five and a half point favorite. Over under at fifty one. I myself was going minus and under. I'm, I'm taking Dallas with the minus five and a half. Yeah, <laughs> give me the minus, and I'm gonna go. I'm actually just gonna go over. I'm going under. I don't. I, I think if he scores 50, again, Dallas will have to score majority of the points because I don't see <coughs> Arizona's offense has been terrible the last couple of weeks. I'm going to go Arizona over. Okay. Um, and then last but not least is going to be that Monday night terrible game. Um, Pittsburgh opened up at minus one and a half. Uh, over-unders at 41 and a half. Currently sitting at Pittsburgh. Um, is a three and a half point underdog, which is surprising. Cleveland's actually the favorite at minus three and a half, over under at 40 and a half. Give me under. Give me, uh, give me the plus. Give me the plus and under as well. Give me the plus and. Because I think Cleveland will win, but I think it'll be like a, a field goal because it's going to be a shit show of a game. Give me Pittsburgh over. Also, uh, Buffalo's game is going to be 16 degrees, 60% chance of snow, and 18-mile-an-hour wind gust. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit better than the, the New England and the Indianapolis Colts game. That makes me happy with my underpick. So. That uh, is going to be 92% cloud cover. <laughs> so it's going to be a, it's gonna be a tricky 
tricky situation. We're probably about to hit two hours. Probably need to close this down. Huh? Yep, yep. Uh, I don't have the full fantasy standings. The championship is between Nate and J-Mac, who Naturally. that is father and son. So a battle of father and son there. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Jimmy. Jimmy was so close to making the championship, which was going to be fucking hysterical because this man made like literally three transactions all season long. So that was just fucking. Ast- <laughs> he was he was barely off yeah. thanks to Miles. Miles didn't get enough points on Monday night because uh, he also didn't start AJ Brown. That fucked him. AJ Brown was on the bench. That That's fucked tough. him. Yeah. That's if tough. you would have started there, you'd obviously easily would have won. But it yeah. was close. It was close. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're gonna wrap up this show. Uh, I'm I'm to the point now. This is the point of podcasting at the length of where my brain starts to kind of turn to mush. It's once we get to about the, about this length right here. It's yeah. like, all right, yep, I'm kind of feeling it. I'm pretty hungry. What are you guys gonna have for dinner? See, I had Mexico Chiquito earlier. Ooh, and I ordered the six pack uh, tacos to go okay. along with my meal for earlier. Okay, but I knew I was coming here, so okay. I knew I would need some food. I love their chimmies. I love their. That's chimmies. what I got. Number one chicken. Love their chimmies, man. Boy. Love them. Dip it in there with that cheese dip. Yeah, no. It's also pretty solid. Never had Fruit it. Fruit punch. You ain't never had Mexican. <laughs> you ever seen it? Uh, Markham, West Markham. Over there by. Uh, I very rarely go to Little Rock unless I'm going to work. Academy and Planet Fitness is over yeah. there. Yeah. How about you, Shane? What, what's for dinner? Honestly, I have no idea. He said whatever. <laughs> Taco truck. <laughs> I very well could have just drive home and be like, oh, that place. Or I could go home and fucking make ramen noodles. Who knows? Right. I think I'm going to have some, some chicken. I got some leftover chicken from yesterday and some uh, some different veggies. I'm probably going to roll with that. So uh, last week I talked about tomato soup, and I, said I, was, and I said I was going to have it. Mm-hmm. Turns out I did not have it. You That's know why? Not, you want to know why? Why? So I went to my mom's. No, I went to I went to Larry's Wednesday night, right? Okay. That was the night I was going to make the tomato soup. We get home. Rowdy Rambo out the kennel, looking through the door. We walk in. These motherfuckers ate five tomatoes and a whole onion. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, what? They even got in some presents. I'm like, I'm like, boy, get in that damn kennel, boy. I don't like that. Like, come on now. How you gonna eat four tomatoes and an onion? I'm def- I don't like, even like onions. I'm definitely so gonna have it. Again, here soon because that shit was so good. Made some mashed potatoes last night. It was pretty. Can't yeah, go like, wrong with man. Tomato soup, man. Grilled cheese. Tomato tomato cheese soup, man. boy. I still All got that bread ready to go. Yeah. I just ain't got no tomatoes because Ratty and Rambo wanted to make some salsa in their stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you made it all the way to the end, shout out to you. You're an absolute legend. This is definitely a longer one. We had a lot to talk about here today. Sorry. Uh, it happens. It's a good show, though. Uh, this is a good show. Very good show, in my opinion. Top show. Uh, boys, like uh, as the music's playing, any final thoughts on our way out here? Uh, nope. Fuck um, fantasy football. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> if um, I'm going to go ahead and announce it here, I'm doing it. Um, Brandon, if you're listening, um, I'm officially announcing my retirement from your league. Uh, I would like to second that, Brandon. You probably wouldn't have split any money with me if I was in the championship because I created a lot of waves. But it is what it is. I created a lot of ways. It is said. what it is. That that league sucked this year, and you could tell because I made the fucking playoffs with nobody on my team. All right. Um, and other than that, just be on the lookout for my 24-hour stream. Again, yep, yep. Uh, twitch.tv forward slash I am Razor underscore. Um, it'll be starting at 11.30 p.m. Central Time Friday. I ain't going to be awake. Going until Saturday, 11.30 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully we we'll make it at the same time because we're also going to be drinking all fucking night, most likely. Um, so if I don't pass out, <laughs> we're going to try to make it. So I wish you the best of luck on that, man. Yeah, yeah that one's going to be tough. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Uh, once again, if you made all of it in, we appreciate the hell of you for that. Uh, shout out to Larry, our former fantasy comrade. Rest in peace. Shout out to John Madden. Rest in peace there. What a coincidence. You know, John it's Madden. Wild. Yeah, Raiders. Yeah, Raiders, man. A Raiders connection. Yeah, I know. Henry Ruggs is a lucky man. I know. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'm glad we're out. We're, we're out, out on that. We're done. We're done. <laughs>